I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Stadion starting! Get every single one of you's a bit Jesus. What a wild ride this has been. Well, that's... It's amusing to me that it's the year 2000. 22, and there are still many subs in the chat. Imagine subbing to someone who doesn't even talk or move anymore. Oh wait, this Swedish homeless looking washed up retard doesn't talk or move either. So we're even. Alright, um. I think when this released in early access, it was like one chapter or something, but I don't remember anything. This was like two years ago. We're still vassal slave slaves, we're just in prettier cages. Uh, so I think I want to do. Oops. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy. Our main headlines tonight. Starting! Alright, alright. What a wild ride! Well, that's a very blunt question. The force is mine to Still vassal sla slaves, we're just in prettier cages. Alright. Oh, Megan. <laughs> we're only getting started. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Intern, let's go. about viewers. I'll do the second hardest one. Well, that's a very... <laughs> <laughs> that's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. interview reddit mods what's Flex? with the freddy mercury hair are you hiding something from us aids perhaps i'm very open about my aids i got it from your mom turn right how oh. Oh. hi david i have a call for you i'm just putting it through all right, mate, Dave here. Nice. Listen, uh, I know you've only come in to clean up the place, but I've got a bit caught up, so uh, you're going to have to run the news tonight. Now, don't worry, it's not hard, and I'm going to stay on the phone and help you. First, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the broadcast room, so if you're not doing it already, look forwards towards all those screens. Looking forward to it. Right, look up at the top. That coloured bar is your audience. You want to keep the viewers going up and not down. Underneath that, you've got the screens. The one on the right is the broadcast screen. That's what the viewers are seeing at home. It's only a couple of seconds behind the master screen there in the middle. That's the one you control. Now, the four small screens on the left show the different signals coming from the studio. And you can choose between them using the numbered buttons on the vision mixer at the bottom left. I got it. Don't worry. I'll talk you through it and you'll pick it up in no time. 
Now, have a look to your left. These plugs control everything in the studio. I've left them set up for you, so provided you haven't fiddled with them, all you have to do now is throw the master trip switch and we're in business. Once you've got the power on, face the front again. All right. You can see on the broadcast screen that we're in the end titles for the show before us. Fortunately, they go on for fucking ages, so there's plenty of time for me to explain. Oh, right, okay, they're over, so we haven't got long now till the broadcast. Right, quickly, mate, look down under the desk. You can see a load of videotapes on the left. They're your adverts. Pick any three and load them into the machines on the right. When you've done that, look up to the front again. Alright. Right, won't be long now till the signal starts coming through from the station. Stay on your toes. All the bigwigs are in tonight because of the election, so we better not make any mistakes. No mistakes. When you get the signal, select screen one with the vision mixer and we're ready to go. Oh, Pour on the mayonnaise. Mm. You don't see if you make me come out and pasta. Yeah, I thought it might increase When do I get the signal? Every day. You offer me prawns every day. Oh. Ten seconds, everybody. That's how I show love. You're trying to kill me. And yet you persist. Oh, going in five, four. Oh, it's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main story is tonight. Okay, we're all good. Next is going to be the throw to the news titles on screen two. There'll be a countdown, but I'll count you in as well. Just relax, mate. It's all gravy. Okay, and is totally independent. Relaxed. And corners the flawed market. Top chat. Sports fans everywhere celebrate as popular footballer Johnny Hamsleeves wins Sports Personality of the Year. And a spoonful of sugar. Megan will be chatting with movie star Lawrence Blunderclatch about his new movie, The Medicated. And, of course, All right, we'll be going, going up. to advance headquarters to hear what the leaders of this fledgling party have to say on their historic... Right, button That's two, in three, two, one, <laughs> lovely mate. Next thing is to throw back to Jeremy with button one when that globe in the middle shrinks down and vanishes. All right. Here it comes. Switch to screen one. Over to you, Jeremy. Lovely mm. night. The votes are in, and it's a decisive win for advance. We often get a bit of interference around this time, mate. Keep your eye on the machine at the bottom right. Use that slider that's flashing, or your scroll wheel, to move the wave up and down, keeping the green bit in the white bit. But critics have accused him of a severe lack of actual policies and of being deliberately vague. The opposition parties have all conceded defeat to advance's overwhelming mandate, but have yet to appear publicly. However, Former Home Secretary. Right, it's going well. All you've got to do now is play the advert at the end of the segment. Make sure you don't play it too early or we'll all get fired. Now the clock at the top is counting you down to the advert. When it reaches zero, press one of the three play ad buttons over there at the bottom right. I normally play the first one at the first break and so on, but you can play them in any order you want. I'll right. count you into it as well, but keep your eye on the clock. To hear the co leader's acceptance speech. And three, two, one advert. One minute back, everybody. Jeremy, I need you to fill after the ads. What? Why? Wanker Snatch is running late. Oh. I thought I'd ask him about the election. Personally, I wouldn't try to confuse him with any big words. Hmm, that's the same policy we use with you. I thought that was our little secret. It's all right, he doesn't remember anything I tell him. I'm deeply uncomfortable with your burgeoning friendship. Mm, love you too. No. Wicked. Neil Wait, deals are unreal. Wicked. Neil's deals are unreal. Great, mate. But this is where it starts getting a bit trickier. This next sequence is what we call a multicam sequence because you're going to be cutting between multiple cameras to keep things interesting. A lot of it's down to personal taste, but here's three good rules of thumb. One, try and keep the shot on whoever is doing the talking. Two, don't stay on the same shot for too long. Ten seconds at the most. So if you're on the person who's talking, try and throw in the odd reaction shot or pull out to the wide shot for a bit just to keep it interesting. Three, don't stay on reaction shots for too long. A couple of seconds is usually enough. Then the audience wants to see who's doing the talking, yeah? Stick to these rules and you'll be fine. It's not as complicated as it sounds. You've seen programs on television, haven't you? Make no. it look like those. 
Might as well get screen one selected now. No need to wait for the broadcast to start. Try and stay ahead, mate. Alright, so one, two is the broad shot, three and four. Thank you so much. Weird order, though. I'm not gonna lie. Going in five, four, three. Welcome back, Jeremy. Later, we'll be hearing from shock election winners advance. But first, I'm ready to go to Megan on screen four. Is here with a star of both stage and screen. Megan? Thank you, Jeremy. Megan Wolf, culture correspondent. And today I have a guest who starred in everything from Shakespeare. Right, to go to Blunderclatch on screen three when she says his name. By none other than Lawrence Blunderclatch. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my dear. I do hope you believe me when I tell you that being with you here today is a moment. Switch to two for the wide now. <laughs> May I say, having you here with us is among ours. <laughs> right, now just try and stay on whoever's talking. The latest movie, which is called The Medicated. The Medicated? Yes. <laughs> wow, what was that like? Well, as I said to Peter at the rap, that's Peter Jensen, the director. Give us a look at Megan's reaction. Lovely. Now back to Thunder Twat. I've worked oh, yeah. with him on several movies, all terribly successful. I said to Peter, what a wild ride this has been. And do you know what, Megan? This has been... I really meant that. Wow, that is fantastic. And am I right in saying that the character you play in this movie right is quite an academic one? Absolutely right. A scientist. Was that a challenge at all? What exactly are you implying? But seriously, yes, you're right. It was a complete departure from my last starring role when I played Sergeant Brock Rockman in Bullet Man. You'll remember that that was the true story of one soldier's fight for a love that surpasses all others. A love, of course, for freedom. I think it's grossed over a billion dollars, but uh, obviously, who's counting? It's a role that saw you scoop two Best Actor awards, if I remember correctly. It's so sweet of you to mention it, but I really am not in it for the awards, although those three little statues do take pride of place on my mantelpiece. Uh, with all the others, I'm sure. So, if you're not doing it for the awards, mm. what is it then that drives you? Oh, that is a beautiful question, Megan. And not easy to answer. Like you, I'm afraid. Cut me, and I will bleed. And often, that's how it feels, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Bleeding. Giving. Suffering for one's audience. I suppose in the end I do it for the difference it makes. I do it for the people that I inspire. I do it for the people. The little people. But most of all, I think I do it for the positive change that I can bring about in the world. And today, of course, <laughs> we're in for some real change, it looks like, in the coming few months. What do you make of this historic election result? Oh, well, <laughs> well, now you're asking. Who is going up? Historic election result, indeed. Historic is the word. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? Very difficult. But um, I think I've always been quite clear that when it comes to politics, that one should always strive to not fuck things up. Shit, he swore. Oh, oh, well, don't worry, he won't do it again. Shit, he did it again. Okay, don't panic. I'll explain how to deal with swearing at the break. ...which opens next week Right, they've swapped the shot of Jeremy on screen one for a VT of the movie clip. You'll get a countdown on the screen, but I'll just let Megan cue you in. My character, Dr. Lodz Hemlock, is faced with a decision that could affect humanity's very survival. Exciting stuff. Let's take a look. Exciting stuff. Cool, looks like Blunderclatch is losing it in the studio, but we ain't got time for that. There's more interference coming. It's a bit trickier this time, mate. Use that little flashing joystick to the left of the knob, or hold down your middle mouse or alt on your keyboard, and as the frequency changes, match it to the white bit by dragging right. You think I don't know that? Now we're going to squash the frequency back by dragging left. No one else mustn't. Dr. Lance, to you, Miss Flanagan. Jubbly, mate. Good to see you, baby. Next, we're going to change the amplitude. What the? Same as last time. 
Little joystick or hold on to a middle mouse and this time push upwards. Try yep. keeping time with the white guards. Drowning lands, you said. You need to see that. Maybe explain so before it happens. By going downwards. Fucking cocksucker. The virus. The sterility. This formula. This formula. This, this is the key. I can stop it all. Yes. I'm watching the trailer. Maybe the clip. practicing. We have to ask ourselves. At the end of the clip, you'll want to play another ad. Remember to use the clock at the top to count you in. Okay. There's another ad. Right, I guess I better explain how to deal with bleeping out swear words. As you've probably noticed, the broadcast screen, here, is about two seconds behind the master screen, here. When someone says a naughty word, the bleep button lights up, like this. Two seconds later, you'll hear that swear word going out on the broadcast, and you need to hold down the bleep button, or the space bar on your keyboard, for as long as the swear word lasts. It can take a bit of practice getting used to hearing two things at once. Just stay calm, and you'll get it. And if you can't tell when to bleep, just above the button, you'll literally be able to I'm see the sound scrolling by. All you gotta do is hold it down while the red bit is over the red line. Simple. Of course, if you do it by eye, you'll have to take your eye off the screens. That's why real professionals do it by ear. Most people like to have the volume of the broadcast screen a little bit below the master screen. Let's set it now. These potentially true statistics are all As you turn it up, you'll hear the advert getting louder. Good. You're set to start censoring. Like I say, it takes a little practice, but I'll try and help you through it, and soon we'll have you bleeping like a pro. Remember, button lights up, count one, two, and hold it down. Remember to select screen one now that you've got the feed. Don't wait for the broadcast to go live. That's too late. You can use the number buttons on your keyboard, one to four. What? Seriously, bad words. Five, four, three... Oh, because the ad is blocking or what? Welcome back. And I'm told we can now go Welcome live back. to advance headquarters we can now where the two leaders, Peter Clement and Julia Salisbury, are Peter about to make their acceptance address. Are about to make their acceptance oh, address. Oh shit, he's pissed. Shall I start? Go for it, Pat. Shall I start? Okay. Well, uh, thank you all for coming. And, well, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> what a day. They said we what couldn't do it. They certainly did. They used every dirty, low-down, lying, southern bastard trick they had against us. But you... The people. Nice. You saw right the through their shit. I'm sorry about the language oh, there. Sorry, sorry about, about that. Perfect. I've had a couple of celebratory fights. Makes me coarser than the grown is funny. Coarser than Memorably the put. Nailed it. But to be honest, who can blame Peter for but celebrating? To honest, who can blame Throughout Peter the campaign, you've heard us say that advance are not a political party. A party is what you have when things are going well. When the country is suffering, you don't need a party. You need a team. A team that can change things. But today is day one of a new future. A better, fairer future. So perhaps we should all be celebrating. Except for the rich. For them, the party's the over. They shouldn't be celebrating. The they they shouldn't should be, be putting their shitting <laughs> pants on and opening their dusty checkbox. Again, oh, colourfully put, but Again, not inaccurate. Get back to who's talking. Before we came out here to address the nation, back we used gaming. Cocksucker. to pass the my show. And Wealth Act. Working with the tax office, we have produced a definitive list of every person in the country with wealth into the millions. You know the sort of probably you, you rather you don't. Because the likes of you and me are not welcome in their gated communities. Tomorrow we will be introducing a sweeping reform of the tax system in this country. No more hiding wealth offshore, no more trust funds or creative accounting. A simpler, fairer unavoidable set of tax laws. So all you bastard public school snobs have got nowhere to hide. And earlier today, we revoked your passports. You want them back? You want to leave like you threatened before the election? That's fine. But first, you're going to pay up 
You're gonna pay back. Advance are going to turn this country from a nation of warring individuals into a team. To properly fund health and education. To raise the living standards of us all. The pundits said we'd have to raise billions. But you'll see when we've reclaimed what's ours, that's absolute ferret shite. So to you posh twats. The people who pay your admittance to serve them drinks in their private clubs. The, the people whose children you raise. So they've got time to get even fucking richer. Advance have this to say to you. It ends today. We are coming for your sports cars and your mansions and your vineyards. It ends today. We will put the wealth of this country back where it should have always been. In the hands of the people who created it. It ends today. Yes, it ends today. And tomorrow, we'll start making it fair again. Just like we promised we would. And until then, ladies and gents, and until then, I suggest we all get pissed. I can't argue with that. Thank you for your time. Well, an interesting acceptance speech there from the leaders of Advance. And our apologies for the fruity language. Hopefully, we've got that bleeped out for you in time. If not, someone's going to be in trouble. Going to be so, as the country braces itself for so, new government, that's all from us this evening at the National Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow with full coverage of the first day under advance. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Have a peaceful night. Right, looks like you've got it now. Thanks for the help, mate. I've got to go. Ferry's about to leave. Probably won't be coming back. Job's yours, mate. Good luck. No boring politics, then. Is this some weird fever dream? Am I dying now or something? Sign up now okay, and okay. every week we'll send you okay. an authentic, ethically sourced ingredient to add to your salad. Build your collection week by week and very soon you'll have a salad that really gets the lunchroom talking. From tomatoes and oils to leafy greens and lovely grains, this really is the complete collection. Every issue also comes with a companion magazine that explores the history of the art form. From the Great Balsamic Wars of 48, or Edward the Confessor's discovery of the cucumber, to the man that changed the very way we see the humble salad, Julius Caesar himself. Start your when the program's finished, you'll get a broadcast report. It's three pages. This first page shows you how well the broadcast went. Each sequence and an overall grade. Remember, grades mean bonuses and they keep the boss happy. If you want to know more about how it went, select more info. If not, select continue to move to the next page. B? I'll take it. Right, this is the important page. It tells you how much you're going to get paid and how much wealth you have over <laughs> bollocks at the bottom shows you the financial state of our main advertisers. But you don't own any fucking shares, you're a cleaner for God's sake, so what would you care? Current wealth, broke ass poor. This is the last page and it tells you the state of the world, tells you how well the government's doing, and down the bottom there, this one's important, tells you what Channel One currently thinks of you. In other words, what the boss thinks. The boss loves me. We'll be going live to tonight's national nightly news. But before that, let's take a look at what's coming up later on. Right, click on rushes and let's have a look at those. Right, this is the rushes room. It's pretty simple. The four screens you can see, they're going to show you the four signals you got from the studio during the actual broadcast. The difference is you can mute any combination of them so you can have a listen to the stuff you weren't allowed to show. Select the broadcast and give it a go. And when you're done listening to the backstage secrets, hit back. Takes quite a while though.
These aren't my cards. Please tell me these aren't my cards. No, they're the right ones, apparently. Oh, but this gives me nothing, Jenny. They must see that. I oh, know. I think they think he won't have anything to say. Oh, for God's sake, come on. It's a huge day. <laughs> He's not an... Absolute bogey. I don't care, Rob. I'm not doing it. I agreed to do one beastly interview a day. I made that completely clear when we started. <laughs> Check my contract. Hi, I'm Megan. Oh, piss off. You're on thin bloody ice, Rob. Whole wheat, man. Whole wheat. We're coming back from the break. Quiet in the studio. Oh, thank you so much. For... Ten seconds, everybody. Getting in five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later, we'll be hearing from shock election winners advance. But first, our very own culture reporter, Megan. about adverts. All right. I guess you can just watch the adverts if you want. An unexpected form, day three. Current wealth broke as poor. You arrive home to find post on the mat, most being nothing more than the usual junk mail. One letter, however, catches your eye. The team wants to know you. Curiosity gets the better of you and you open it. It's a form from the new advanced government asking for information on all citizens. The first page is filled in already. Your name, your spouse, your children. Uh, well, you muse, at least they get the basics right. The rest of the questions are left for you to complete. They appear to be mandatory. Question 1. Upon starting a new job, you would be friendly and introduce yourself to your new co-workers, be productive and get to work immediately, ease yourself in and orient orientate yourself with your new workplace, reminiscence with friends about old jobs. Uh, I guess be productive. Question 2. A colleague in a different department has confided in you that Taking home confidential information. Now a file of minor importance has gone missing. You would help your colleague cover up the violation, recommend that your colleague report it, promise your colleague that you won't tell anyone, report the violation to your supervisor immediately. Oh. I don't know where to put the fucking cam. I guess the bottom right? I'm not sure. Ah, uh, fuck, I'm not a snitch, yo. Uh, I guess. Day three, an unexpected form. An entire department was fired today for consistent underperformance. Your boss has put in has put it in place new targets that are significantly higher than previous ones. You would leave work on time, stay late to ensure you hit the first deadline, leave work early and head to the pub to chat about the changes with colleagues, leave work early, head home to see your family. Uh, uh, early, leave work on time. Day three, it's the annual company barbecue and you and your family have been invited. You are looking forward to enjoying a nice day out with friends and family by washing your hair that day. Go if you're free but wouldn't mind missing it. I've been practicing with your co-workers and think you'll win talent contest this year. Uh, I guess go if you're free. You've had a long, successful career and are now about to retire. In your speech, you list your achievements and all the good memories you have of working there. Give an honest review of the pros and cons of the company. Focus on issues and challenges you face while working there. Refuse to attend. That's it. 
spare time, you like to relax alone, doing things like listening to music or making models. Attend politic political rallies and stand up for what you believe in. Encourage and support your children with their hobbies. Play your local sports team. I guess the relaxing sounds pretty good. Your ideal holiday your ideal holiday getaway would be surrounded by natural beauty, getting away from the strain of the daily grind, exploring somewhere unfamiliar unfamiliar and discovering new experiences and challenges, a structured day out at the theme park bursting with thrills and attraction for you and your family, a romantic getaway with your partner in Tropical Island of Paradise. Uh, uh, natural beauty sounds kinda nice. It is most important that the government keeps people safe, free, happy, equal. Sign your name. All right. A family matter. It's late. Sam and the kids have gone to bed. You're just drying up a favorite coffee cup, a worn out souvenir of your first trip together. The prince faded, but the goofy face still makes you smile. A knock at the window brings you back to reality. Hope they go gravity. There is there in the garden, clutching a gaudy neon green suitcase, is Chris, Sam's sibling. As soon as you let them in, they sit at the kitchen table, visibly stressed. Go for some mate, Boris. Here, you're losing yours, you Swedish hobo. You need more physical expression, mate. It's like looking at a still image or paint dry. Fix your <laughs> up here till <laughs> comes out your ears. Cheers. Cheers. I'm so sorry for bursting in so late, Alex, Chris stammers. But I need a favor, and you're the only one I can ask. Ask, they say, actually. Ask. No problem, what's going on? Are you okay? Should I go get Sam? You must have been all this crazy advanced stuff. You must have seen all this crazy advanced stuff. The Acid and Wealth Act, they're calling it. Taking people's hard-earned money to fund the lazy is bullshit. You've never seen Chris this agitated. I'm not saying the top 1% or whatever don't have stupid money, Chris adds hastily, but they can afford it. People like me, we're going to lose everything. That's awful, but I'm not sure how I can help. You're always the well-off one in the family. I'm sorry, but taking from the rich to help the poor doesn't sound so bad. They're going to take everything, Alex. Everything I've spent my life building. I can't let that happen. I need a favor. Chris eyes find the floor tiles. I need to borrow your passport. My passport? Why? Why do I get the feeling I'm not going to like this? My passport? They've taken mine in half the bloody countries, but people always say you and I look similar, so Chris is pacing now. I need to leave before it's too late. Once I'm out, me and my money will be safe, but I need to go now before they freeze my accounts. Please, Alex. I wouldn't ask if I had another choice. Okay, it's upstairs in the safe. Uh, surely there's another way. It can't be that serious. <laughs> Alright, have my passport. Fight. You climb the stairs to your bedroom. Careful not to wake Sam, who is cocooned in the duvet as usual. Uh, you open the wardrobe, unlock the safe, and retrieve the password. A sleepy voice breaks the silence. Alex, what's going on? Nothing, sweetheart. Don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. Chris is downstairs. They're leaving the country and they need my passport to do it. There's nothing. Sam seems unsure. You sure? What are you doing in the safe? I'm sure it's nothing. Don't worry about it. I'll be up the bed shortly. Close the safe and head back downstairs find Chris at the table fidgeting. They jump up as soon as you enter the kitchen. So have you got it? Yep, here, good luck with everything. 
For the first time, Chris smiles. It's infectious. Thanks. I really appreciate this. I'll get back in touch once I'm safe out of the country. Chris takes the password and, breathing a sigh of relief, grabs the knife on a fluorescent suitcase and heads out into the flight. You head to bed, hoping you can pry some of the duvets away from Sam's without waking them. Jesus Christ. Fucking wall of text. The fallout! Four. All right, they're all on. Right, let's load up the adverts. You might want to have a bit of a think about it. Your decisions have consequences, don't they? Who should we play? Is this toy safe? Should we play? Is this toy safe? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen this fucking thing. Must have toy for your children this Christmas. Uh, you fucking tell me. Just the kujun. Right, you can see they finally got the old headline system up and working again, and the vision mix is already in headline mode because headlines always come at the start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. Uh -huh. And they're to help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here, or image B on the right bottom screen here. Okay. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your Which mind clock? as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But if you don't this make clock? any decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them, and that's going to affect their lives. So, like with the adverts, choose carefully. No, and we're off. Good luck, mate. Before I get time off, we'll be back in the next break. Yeah, I'm coming, darling. All right. Those gets really hot. Is this challenge who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Action movie. Ten seconds, everybody. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five. Four, three. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Dawson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the country's wealth creators in a state of panic and unfavorable rumblings already heard from overseas, I'll be asking my guests whether Advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Out with the old, Remington's Fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honors immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favorably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising Easy. 30 points. Easy. In, announcement. in her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehucks. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful expeditions for this unlikely pairing. 
In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, we will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very program. Johnny is seen here with socialite and performance artist Tiffany Lamour, whose recent show, Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch, has kept her firmly in the public eye. Could romance be on the cards for these two budding A-listers? And Grievous Bodily Charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night, could this be exactly the right time for Advance's new approach? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Nice back, everybody. Can we get the get? What? Why did we run? Oh! Fuck! Fucking interference, bro. <laughs> I didn't see it! Wake of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, right, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves, we're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd, ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, <laughs> if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't and what And this I... will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, who will be laughing then? That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! But what this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all Maybe a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilised, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already, un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken-science and opi-arts. Like opiates, see? 
Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This Can is the issue. Hand, it's all coming from the water. The broadcaster, we have a problem. No, broadcaster, we have a problem. Broadcaster, we have a problem. Broadcaster, we have a problem. GDP on dismantling infrastructure. That could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got a sack here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan. Uh, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomized into submission. No, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Megan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. On the national line. One minute back. One you know, minute back. I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Oh, Jeremy. fuck. How much are you being paid by them, then? Shut the fuck up, Alan. I've never heard so much shit in my life. <laughs> well, we'll see who's full of shit, won't we? Fuck, I was just going to say, I go in there like a motherfucker. Unfortunately, I can't understand it for you. <laughs> With his state-of-the-art human-like voice to keep them company when you can't. If you keep me happy, I'll keep you safe. And his incredible... Actually, fuck it, I don't care, I hate the fucking news. Oh, bloody hell, I love this tune, though. All right, mate, see you later, bye! You don't want to be left out. Oh, Mr. Snuggle Hugs, you're so silly. Mr. Snuggle Hugs in stores now. Selling out back. Three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep uh, up with demand, Jeremy. I was going to say... Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Right. We need more support from ministers. We... What are you doing? <laughs> we need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Uh, just hang on. The, 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 the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. And now we see why Forson doesn't work a real change. Oh my god, we'll be happy. Laugh, gotcha, please, fire, 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 Yes, I totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Oh, I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Uh, or cosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to watch There's too much going on! Shut the fuck up! There's gays and gypsies, mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimps escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Delia, could you give me a little help, please? Uh, 
as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible? Am I supposed to show this or what? Okay. Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh. in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Can't you go back in your gym space? And you go whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people Darling, of this... where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this simply won't do. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Mummy said... Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy said get back in your kids' No! Naughty! You beast, Clive! As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal. No one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A-, minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's position on morality for us. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary and menacing a swap. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. <laughs> Prison's a mixed bag. The structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalisation, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we're trying to let you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank Tony! I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. So open! I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris, oi, oi. little Chris, oi, oi. and Vampire Chris. This one's, yeah? Yep. One sec, love. Shit, when Tony's on the news. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. Open. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this so name? Fun. You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks only got Mr Fancy, oh. <laughs> Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It, so seems... it seems like we've caught you at a bad time. The little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Oh, I can't really hear you. Jesus. It's getting a bit busy here. Yes, we uh, Jesus. seem to be losing a signal no there, Tony. fucking way, that bully back! <laughs> Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. Well, I think we've got some of this. Tony? Tony, I mean, we're literally going for two seconds. How does this happen, Tony? Can you hear me? Well, we have to be lost our control of the place. I've actually a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. Um, I ain't got long and I'm quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't, though. You won't get punished for what all nothing. Just try and stay what? in the groove. Also, one last tip. When the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so what fucking music? In this dressing room, probably banging his head against the wall. Looks alright, I've got this. Flipped in the march towards progress. After all, there's nothing better than the Ten seconds, everybody! The advance go. We're gonna open on Megan. Four, Camera two. Going in five, four, three. 
Welcomes Black, I'm Megan Wolfe, and on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College, who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey! Friendship on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley Dash Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> and I believe you two are sisters. Is that right? Yes, Charlotte and Charlotte. Oh. Only joking. Harriet and Charlotte came up with the whole idea. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze. For a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off. <laughs> Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes as well. Teacher, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. Maths is really important. Thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle. Made. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> We just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yeah. That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah? Because, in a way, she's like all, all of us. us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> so, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grants? Uh, two days ago. The fuck? The from advance arrived at the school. Oh, now, I the thought they were supposed to show that. It was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin. I thought they were supposed to, 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 wow, to show the play react? now I and follow the, it in the, the crew. Bin. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny because Angela and I don't usually vote. We, we're not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic mainly, but we did used to watch that Peter Clements mm -hmm. DIY show back in the day. And so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Okay. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> so let's have a look at a short section of Hey, Friendship. <laughs> Dear Diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. fears. But still I walk the corridors alone. Alone. Oh. Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi Gary. Oh heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Gary, Gary the, the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year? Great! I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. And so important. Uh, maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Keep going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Oh, my arm's free, coach. Brilliant, keep going. Right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I, Gary the 
fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. What the hell is this? What is this? Take a look at me. Take a little look at my face. I could be you. She could be you. And you could be me. Or you could be me. I'm present. shouldn't exist but that's just prejudice and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the Fist I grew up on a council estate the park was hip but the flats weren't great my dad used to come home drunk and late and he'd hit my mum for dinner he had to wait oh, where's my dinner oh, it's not ready oh, where's my Women is wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. Life can be cheeky. Yeah. Thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the Thank National you. Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> what the literal fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Friendship! Oh, someone please get these... The dihydrogen monoxide right from your pores to give you the crisp, brittle skin you've come to expect. The new Judico Shon will revitalise the appearance of the strength of your face's skin. 41% of women in surveys said they loved their visible the plates. Best they've had on and Twitch. 7 out of 10 dentists when? would recommend it. Judo Cachon. Because we said oh. so. Wait, really? What event is that? What, what event is that? Is there gonna be Star Lord? Oh shit. Alright.
let's pause it. I didn't know they had a thingy today. ...of Elder Scrolls. We leaned into the architectural and cultural traditions from medieval and feudal Europe, knowing this could be blended into our established Britain designs from the base game. The dense city streets of Gonfalon Bay and the idyllic coastal palace of Castle Navir are prime examples of the imposing Breton structures and hidden underground right. catacombs born from that work. It's Players will also find medieval fanfare only? and splendor on the tournament grounds where nobility and commoner alike enjoy festivities. The nobles treat High Isle like a resort, and that's reflected in the way the nobles dress. Then why the High fuck? Isle elite always okay. dress in their finest, projecting their status as not only the leaders of the great family houses, but their barely guy. hidden ambitions to command the archipelago oh, with total up power. The guy. Why the fuck would I care about Elder Scrolls Online? Unless you show me the fucking Star Lords or fucking Skyrim 2. The fuck? Hey, Carps Gaming, the parents of Dan Chef with a 60 month dog passenger. Daddy, it's starting! Uh, I also scored a toy. It's fine. Alright, we beat that one with top score, did we not? During music, you should have changed scenes on beat. Oh, that's what the music he was talking about. I don't understand what the fuck he was talking. Ah, okay, okay. That makes sense. Crip current wealth, crippling debt. That's not good. <clears throat> Isn't that worse than how than previously? You get to the theater slightly early, and Sam's already there waiting. Dressed to the nines. Why am I going to the theater if I'm in crippling debt? You smile widely as you join hands and take your seats in the private box. Private box? You certainly could get used to this. The tickets arrive on your doormat on Monday with a typed thank you from Chris. You'll get your passport back soon enough, apparently. The show isn't to your usual taste, a pretentious opera in a language you know for a fact that Chris doesn't speak either. Still, the complimentary drink sure go down smooth. When you show, when you, the show finally ends, how many bows, bows do these people need? You stand in line to get your coats and Sam has you in creases with a hilarious Impression of the conductor, arms flailing wildly. Jesus Christ, man, can't fucking read. The couple in front of you are, are talking about the relocation of people who wouldn't, couldn't pay their new tax bills. It sounds awful. Sam smiles great, gratefully at you as you both think of Chris safe and sound. When you get home, you're still laughing as Sam heads upstairs to shower before bed. You notice your 14-year-old son is at home, and there's a note on the kitchen table in his almost illegible scrawl. It says he's at a friend's house. It's a school night, so you go over there and march him home. You trust Charlie. He'll be home soon. 14-year-old soon. Yeah, soon, son. It's one night. He's got to start taking responsibility for his own decisions sometime. What's the worst that could happen? He's dead. Your family answering machine crackles into life. Who could be calling while you and your spouse were at work? Good afternoon. This is a message for the Winston family. It's Miss Smith calling regarding your son Charles. The tiny old woman goes on. I'm sure there is perfectly reasonable explanation for it, but he wasn't in school today and we hadn't heard from you that he would be absent. I'd like to remind you we do require all absences to be authorized in advance or in exceptional circumstances for parents to ring first thing in the morning. Please see to it that it doesn't happen again. Thank you. Goodbye. Bro, what is this fucking music, man? What the fuck?
a gentle reminder. You're leafing through the pile of accumulated posts. Each new build pulls on your gut like a lead weight until a flash of blue makes you pause. Recognizing the Teal Advance logo on the envelope, you tear it open. Dear Winston residents, this is your second reminder letter regarding the assets and wealth redemption scheme. Please submit your passports to your nearest government office as soon as possible in order to register for the scheme. You cannot receive your share of the national rebate without submitting these documents. You knew there would be consequences, but that doesn't make it any easier. We work as a team, and we are rewarded as a team. Four words together, Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. This is safe, that's all that matters, you hope. Minus thousand social credits. A tight Christmas. You can't help but crack a smile as you look around the table. The snow has settled on the grass outside, the kids are pulling a cracker while you elderly mother tried, tries to hope, keep her eyes open. You did always have a soft spot for Christmas. You're sitting at the uh, head of the table now, your dad's place. Across from you is Chris' empty seat, probably on a tropical beach somewhere, you think. You catch Sam's eye, who breaks into a smile, clearly thinking the same thing. Even without Chris, the food had to be stretched a little thinner this year, but no one seems to notice. Christmas really can be a wonderful time of the year. You look around the room at your family. Are you having a nice Christmas, Grandma? So stay silent and make a toast. Stay silent. Your mother, in an increasingly rare moment of clarity, looks towards the empty seat before speaking. Sam, is Chris not coming? You wink as you pass Charlie a meager portion of potatoes. Sam answers gently. Chris has had to go away, Cassandra, but everything's okay, thanks to Alex. Your son, Charlie, looking to the empty seat, adds, I miss Chris. Frowning, your spouse puts a hand on his shoulder. Me too, sweetheart, we all do. Your Chris will be home by next year. You look around the room at your family. We're having a nice Christmas, Grandma. Your mother smiles broadly at you, just like she used to. This pad is absolutely lovely. Sam softly corrects her. That's Alex, Cassandra. Alex. Pat's not with us anymore. Oh, yes, yes. Of course, she murders. And immediately she's back to the frail shadow of her former self. Sam smiles kindly and squeezes her hand under the table. You look around the room at your family. You make a toast. You stand and raise your glass. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm glad we're all here. Well, most of us. There are murmurs of cheers and much clinking of glasses. Your daughter, Susie, seizes the opportunity to corner you. You know how you love me? You raise... You know how you love me? Bro. You raise a question... Questioning eyebrow. I'm not going to like this, am I, you joke? You know me and my friends are planning on going traveling this year. Susie begins innocently. Well, I was hoping you'd help me with money. You laugh. I knew it. I'm a mind reader. You chuckled as your 19-year-old daughter rolls her eyes. You wish you could say yes without worrying, but now that your mother had to move in, things aren't quite as simple anymore. Just how much are we talking here? Only a few hundred, she mumbles as she pushes a stray pea around her plate. It takes a great effort for you not to spit your mulled wine across the table onto your elderly mother. I know it's a lot, darling, Sam interjects, but trains are expensive. This is a great opportunity for her, and I did already say she could do. She could go. I'm sorry, but that's, that's money we just don't have. You're right, we'll make it work somehow. Fuck it. We'll make it work. Susie grins, stretches from ear to ear. You mean it? That's so great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kidding, of course. The mood soars as Sam puts a paper hat on your head and Charlotte takes pleasure in reading everyone's got awful cracker jokes. The room is filled with voices and laughter. Looking around at your grinning family, your mother whispers, your father would be so pleased. You dab your eye with your napkin. You feel very lucky. Jesus Christ. Christ. A long weekend. Are you fucking kidding me, dude?
Very good. Very good timing, sir. Why does the sip on this damn case never close? It's your anniversary. Every year you and Sam go away for the weekend, usually camping. You're not made of money. You've been looking forward for, to it for ages. Finally getting some time alone together where you can forget about the noise of life. No kids, no work, just a bit of romance and some peace and quiet. The zip uh, finally gives up the battle and you drag the bulging suitcase down the stairs. The answer machine is blinking on the hall table. Good evening, Alex. This is Mr. Boseman. I'm calling to inform you that you'll be required to work this weekend. Heart sinks. Some information has come to light concerning the rising tension between our nation and foreign powers. And the national nightly news team will be working around the clock to ensure we break the story first. Needless to say, I will expect your attendance tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. sharp. Have a pleasant evening, Alex. Shock turns to annoyance and then fury. What are you gonna tell Sam? Sam comes downstairs brimming with excitement. Kissing you, they grab the car keys from the dish and start to load your bags into the back. Ignore the message you need this weekend. Apologize profusely to your spouse, but you really should go into work. Boseman's temper is legendary. Surely I should go. You sigh heavily. You're going to go, aren't you? The voice behind you makes you whip around. You're not simply. I get it. Your family has always been your priority, but sometimes work has to come first. You should go. Sam pulls you close and holds you tight. A wave of gratitude washes over you. You unpack in disappointed silence. Day 70, 80, 90, 6, 7, 8. Permission slipped. Your son Charlie hovers over, hovers at your elbow as you read. Do you find yourself striving to achieve? Are you an active member of the team? Do you like reaping the benefits of cooperation? Uh, join the advanced go getters today, forward together. This doesn't sound like the youth club he told you about. Charlie grabs the flyer from you and thrusts a form into your hand. So I can walk there straight from school and Ben's sister can drop us home after. Do you want to do anything? Uh, you sign the permission slip for your son to join the advanced go-getters. Sure. Enjoy your life. Your son is thrilled, it's heartwarming to see him so passionate about becoming an active part of the community. This can only be a good thing, surely. A free ticket. Some guys that were gave them to me, they can't go. Sam stands in front of you, branching two tickets. You see the title in bold letters. Alan James is right in front of you. I'm really unsure, what do you think, shall we go? Free tickets are free tickets, he's a character and it'll be hilarious if nothing else. I don't think so, the guy's a nutshell. Fuck it, let's go, free tickets. The show is entertaining, but much less funny than you thought. He's a powerful public speaker and something about it sticks in your mind. Lying in bed at that night, wide awake, long after Sam's breathing turns heavy, it hits you. It was the crowd, no laughing, but roaring. Profitable partnership. After a particularly long day at work, you come home to find the post sorted into piles. As Sam has taken to doing recently, most of it, is, most of it is the usual rubbish. But a letter with the increasingly familiar advanced logo and urgent respond immediately plastered on the front in a correspondingly urgent red font grabs your attention. Best to get it over with. Dear Winston residents, this letter is to inform you that the advanced government has taken another step forwards in our fight for equality by nationalizing the largest private corporations and redistributing uh, their resources among the citizens of this great country. The Partnership Bonds program ensures that wealth created by the people is delivered to the people. You don't remember this being in the manifesto. Every household will become a partner in one of three carefully selected institutions chosen by advance for consistent high performance and financial security. Please note, all returns are based on public opinion and cannot be guaranteed. 
please stop with this fucking music when I'm trying to read out loud. Ah! Please select one of the following. EO, I have the holder. Incorporated whether it's cosmetics, clothing, or kosher. We see the beauty in all our customers. Neil's Deals Limited. It's always a steal from Crazy Neil. Pleasure Corp or business is your pleasure from sports to travel and even just some, some, some new time. You can't say pleasure without leisure. What? What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are they talking about? Thank you for making your selection. Please return this form using the envelope provided. You will be receiving a report from your partnership in 3 to 6 working months. It seems even advanced can't defeat the quagmire of governmental bureaucracy. The future of this nation is in partnership. Forward together, Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. Just how much influence do you have? Jesus fucking Christ. Someone fist me. Voltanzo, Gandhi is Ostrogothic and Lamal with the four years cringe face for your mom. For your mom, bitch. Enjoy your pride that shit. The fuck do you want? Good evening, Alex. It's Boozman here. Boozman. Your boss. Oh shit. While you're powering up and getting the adverts loaded, I thought I should just tell you that we've had one of those public information films from the government, and it's mandatory that you play it. You still have a free choice for the other two, so read those tape labels carefully, but make sure you play the advance advert, preferably at the second break. Right, that's the lot. Have a great show, total pip. My god, that weather looks nasty. Check your prostate. Oh, how's it going with Steve? Why are all men such pricks? That well, eh? Apparently he has a complicated relationship with his patient. No. Sorry, are you saying he chose his imaginary friend in the sky over you? I don't know why I talked to you. The problem is a really awful date. Ten seconds, everybody. Like I said, all of you. Did your personality actually slip out? Pricks. Going in five, <laughs> four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy. Yeah, how am I supposed to know who I'm talks Megan. first? Our main stories tonight. Uncooperative. A mysterious symbol has appeared overnight on thousands of buildings throughout the capital. Tonight, in an exclusive live interview with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, I'll be asking what this mysterious symbol might mean. After three months of record-breaking approval ratings, could this be the daring first move of a silent resistance movement? And what would that mean as we go into the future? We shall overcome. Trapped in Dante's taint for more than a month now, doctors Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensford and David Wong announced today that they're considering two possible options. With two of the finest minds in science working together, hopes are still high for the eventual return of the team to dry land. While both options are still on the table, support seems to be growing for a daring escape attempt. If a group of fungus experts can't fix the most advanced craft ever conceived by man, then who can? Bearing their opinions, the formerly rich are fighting back with a naked protest. Our very own Robin Short was on hand earlier today when this new protest group first presented themselves. <laughs> Spokesman Wentworth Somerset Bentley said today, they've had the shirts off our backs, they might as well have the west of it too. And while it's easy to laugh, perhaps we should all just be pondering how desperate the formerly rich are to regain their power. Table for two. Johnny Hamsleeves and Tiffany L'Amour were spotted having a private moment out at lunch today. The popular couple have certainly been on a roller coaster since they started dating... Hi Foursome, you're here again. I tricked you into playing a visual novel. Could we FMV be on game, lol, you know, W. I hope you've been enjoying it so far, sir. I've been going through it myself. Also, oh my god, you suck at this game, lol, you boomer brain. About to become the bad boy of sport. 
and Hug. onwards Again. and upwards. In an attempt to put the Mr. Snugglehugs disaster behind them, Rimington's Fist CEO, Sophia Rimington, today announced a brand new product that already has the markets buzzing. Imagine I'm doing this. This groundbreaking product came in as real life shop when it was well. revealed earlier it's today. Double. Though its critics are skeptical that the young CEO can fulfill her promises. Described as a breakthrough far ahead of its time, the male contraceptive pill is heralding a sexual revolution. Its fans are celebrating the fact that men can finally take equal responsibility for contraception. But others have expressed concerns over its safety and side effects. With that exclusive Prime Ministerial interview coming up later. And our very own Patrick Bannon coming to you live from the first annual Sports Board Final. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National Nightly News. What the fuck? My hotkeys don't work. Fucking manually click. Piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck is this? Fix your goddamn TV station. First tonight. After the Christmas horror caused by Mr. Snugglehugs, we have an exclusive interview with one of the victims. Poor seven-year-old Timmy Tadlock, like so many of those affected by the Christmas bloodbath, has spent the last three months undergoing a series of reconstructive facial surgeries. Last week, joyfully, he spoke for the first time since the tragedy. Tonight, he talks to us. Before we go to the interview, however, this station would like to issue a full and frank apology for any part we may have played in the tragedy. We should never have advertised Mr. Snugglehugs. Without our publicity, the sheer scale of this tragedy, and now upwards of 8,000 casualties, might have been averted. On behalf of the Nightly News team, we're sorry. In future, we will do better. Now it's over to Robin Short at the Tadlock family home. Robin? Thank you, Megan. I'm here with Mr. and Mrs. Tadlock and their seven-year-old son, Timothy. Thanks for spending time with us today. Yes, well, you're bloody lucky we're spending any time with you at all. After what you lot did, irresponsible. I mean, whose idea was this anyway? It's, it's all right. It wasn't your fault. As you can see, Megan, there's still a few open wounds here. I'll tread carefully. I'm going to speak to Timmy now. Hello, Timmy. Can you see me? Mummy, who's that lady? It's a lady from television, Timothy. She's going to ask you a few questions. And you be careful now. It upsets him to remember. Don't worry, Mr. Tadlock. I wasn't the youngest ever editor of the Swinstead Middle School Inquirer for no reason. So, Timmy, can you tell us what happened to you? You had just unwrapped Mr. Snugglehug's hand. Was he under the tree? Yes. I could smell the Conductor, we have a problem. Oh, Eleven. Ah, uh, yes. That'll be the first. Conductor, we have a problem. Eleven. 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 Conductor, we have a problem. <laughs> Look, I've asked you nicely. And am I right in saying that one of his real action eyes is now permanently embedded in your cheek? Yes. When I took him in, when I took him in, I know it's under there, staring at me. Yeah, some of the other children have started calling him Timmy Three Eyes. And then with his glasses. Not too many eyes, Robin. <laughs> and what's the last thing you remember before the darkness overtook you? He looked at me with his one eye and laughed as he burned. It sounds very traumatic. So, do you have nightmares? All right, that's quite you, enough of you two coming in here with your camera trying to make a buck out of our suffering. I won't have it. Mr. Tadlock, just a couple more questions. Timmy, do you think you will ever be what we can call No, no, you've had your questions, and now look. Oh, you've made him cry with all three of his eyes. 
Do you think your parents will ever really love you again? That's it. And I'll come on, baby. I'm going to sit down. Any victims of an indescribable tragedy that has shaken our nation. Thank you, Robin. My question is to be answered by Sophia Remington in the coming days and months, I'd wager. How will she turn this crisis around? So, Jeremy, what are the warning signs a consumer should look out for when they're spotting a dangerous toy? Well, Megan. Experts advise to always check for the new advanced mark, which guarantee a level of safety and quality. Yeah, can we just get a close-up on, on camera three here? So if we take a look at this National Nightly News mug, you should see the mark just on the base of it there. In the wake of the scandal, the government were praised for their swift response in bringing in this set of stringent checks and new products. It certainly is good to know that someone's watching out for our families. When we come back, our very own Patrick Bannon will be live from the Sports Board Finals. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. We'll be back. Which advert, advert is it? One minute back. Oh, Was this the so second one? Oh. Fuck! She's oh fuck, good. I played it too mm. fast. Oh no. Yes, she is. Watch your back, Jeremy. The women are coming. I'm more worried about this water dripping onto my head. I thought I already played one advert. Alex, over. We're getting reports in that naked protesters might try and spoil the sports board final by waving their fleshy bits about. Try and make sure you don't broadcast it. It's 6pm for God's sake. No one wants to see fannies on the news. Bozeman out. Kitchens, or collect your thoughts in our beautiful gardens. And when it's time, at the end of your stay, you'll pass on painlessly, surrounded by those you love, in comfort Fuck, I should have played this for a second. Isn't I specifically said play this one second, but I panicked. Well I was like, did I not play one ad? Our expert legal team will help you make all those difficult arrangements. That's what it says. Now, after yes, I understand that, but I always say welcome back. I think we should just keep it as it is. Well, of course you do. I've got one hack line. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't write it, Jeremy. That's all right, fine. Jenny, there's something wrong with the auto cue. Ten seconds. Oh, I just felt a drip again. Have they not fixed this? I want to see us fry. It's good for the ratings. Five, four... Three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. Coming up later, we'll be speaking to the Prime Ministers about their exciting new healthcare facilities, transition centres. Nice to see they care. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Jeremy. But first, we're going now to our own Patrick Bannon, who's reporting live from the finals of the new game that's gripping the nation, Sports Board. Patrick? That's right, Megan. You join me live here from the final, the first annual Sports Board Championship. It's been a hotly contested competition so far. I think it's fair to say these two have been dancing around each other all season. First up, we have Ellie Stryker. She's the more experienced of our two players today. Stryker has got an accuracy of 7, a danger rating of K, and a 12-month driving ban. Stryker's known for her signature move, the Eel Lanky Hamster. And facing her tonight, hoping to prove himself with a career record of 12 outs, 14 finishes, and a divorce pending, is Mr. Wingspun himself, Tommy, the fingernail Harris. Just waiting on the ref now. The slapping ceremony is taking part. Still going on. And, uh, go first. Striker, of course, first. Uh, first to start as she won the trivia Deep round road. earlier on by some margin. The road. Uh, Harris, uh, perhaps the, the brawn and not the brain. Places. Stupid. Eddie Striker. Nice start there from Striker. She's determined not to let the nerve show. Uh, not after last time. <laughs> on to Mr. Harris now. Tommy. <laughs> Using his arm to pick up the ball. Bad shot there from, uh, from Harris. Back to striker for shot number three. All right. She's gone to sort of throwing it under her legs. Uh, not bad, if you ask me. Is that contact? Go away completely. To Harris. Bit of business with the ref, but it got sorted out. Back to Harris now. A ball in the hand is worth two in the bush. Football. Move back. I'd say that's fair, but what do I know? Oh no, and Harris is not going to be happy with that. So really not a good start there for Tommy Harris in round one. We can only hope that round two treats him a bit better. 
Uh, but first, of course, after the arguing with the ref section, it's time to change ends. Now we have the ceremonial changing of the ends. And of course, now they go back to the starting positions, as that makes sense. Striker giving it large. Second round, Dublé and Harris. Winter round two now with Harris. OK, we seem to have some sort of streak on the pitch. I apologise if we broadcast any of that stuff. Um, she appears to have slogans across her breasts and arse. Um, uh, try and ignore all of that security. I'm sure we're going to take them out as soon as possible. Uh, apologise if uh, we, we broadcast any of that. As I said, um, we're going to get the situation resolved as soon as possible. Um, uh, they're trying to carry on play, but it's probably a bit difficult, and I'm struggling to follow. Um, because uh, it's quite nice, saw and um, women's body. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. So back into round two now, uh, and how is absolutely determined to close that massive gap. Eddie Striker. No, it's just some of the tightest play I've seen ever. Oh, I got distracted. Harris. And was that the fitted thumb screw? We haven't seen that of the heat. What a brilliant mm -hmm. move. Back to Striker. And we know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That is, of course, the ground sound. Excellent bit of play here on both sides of the bucket. I don't know about you at home, but I'm finding the technical mastery in this play here absolutely blooming, jaw-dropping. The ref has spotted something in uh, Harris's neck or head. And Harris is having an absolute shocker. What a miserable start there ah, for Tommy sport. Harris. Uh, but he is a late bloomer, of course, the boys said that. And after all, it is a game of two halves. Yeah, uh, four yeah, rounds yeah, and seven yeah, subs yeah, But now, of course, it's time for the half-time show. Yeah, Sponsored by Wimington Switch. On my whistle, on my whistle. Must be some music here to start the half-time show. OK, another posh poker to lose on the court here. We can only apologise for that. Um, We'll do our best to shield you from having to look directly at it. Um, is uh, running around here with his genitals uh, on display for all to see. Um, and uh, ruining what was shaping up to be quite the dance interlude there. Um, now he's thrusting himself in, uh, in Harris's face. Security's on it. Uh, and the bucket's been knocked over! I cannot stand it when the bucket gets knocked over. Um, hopefully he'll get taken out now. Um, uh, genitals flying around for all to see. Um, really, if you ask me, not Sunday morning television. Um, and uh, out of there, uh, hopefully uh, taken away, never to be seen again. Final pose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was excellent. Final pose. And a lovely finish there on both sides of the bucket. I wouldn't like to call that one. Uh, and as we head into round three, I'd love to know what's going on in these two players' heads. Uh, but unfortunately, because of science, we can't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad. Well, that ball boy's giving me the eye all the whole day. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, striker there, not a great start. Um, she looks a bit flustered, I think, after all that swinging around. Back to Harris here. Got what I wouldn't give to be that ball. I'm all right, ladies. Tommy Harris. And it dribbled down his arm, which is actually a really good move, because, of course, if it dribbles down his arm and goes on the floor, it's not going in the bucket. Back to Striker. Striker's gone for the animal bonus there, but of course, perhaps... And yes, Harris has counted it with a tiny bell. That is wonderful play. Of course, we've seen that before. Look at her face. She is absolutely gutted. What a mud. Um, that could have been the clincher. What a massive shame. Um, Harris received possession now. Harris to serve now. Um, Harris, of course, undefeated by Kestrel in his last four back. Here we go. Tommy Harris. That's all right. Not bad there, he threw it quite far away from him, which is quite a good Great idea. No Very contact. clever there. Perhaps a little contact, a caution from the referee, who's being, if you ask me, a little bit harsh. Ellie Stryker. And she's let the nerves get to her! What the hell was that? You hate to see it, don't you? You cannot believe it. Oh, for God's sake. OK, like, I mean, this is a mess now. I don't, I don't know what I can be doing about this. Um, uh, I mean, there's sort of uh, uh, breasts and genitals for all to see. Um, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Um, they, they're full of everywhere, aren't they? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll try and carry on. Um, the players are trying to carry on, but of course it's difficult because um, 
because these protesters are uh, hoping we can get them taken off soon so we can carry on with the match. Oh, hello. Okay, so what is going on here? Yes, yes. We want our money. Yes, very good. Take them away. Can be. Bloody wasters. Absolute wasters. Oh, jog on! This is the mine round. It's an absolute bloody. Okay, and now we're going to go into the final round. Um, and of course, as it's a Tuesday, the final round is a mine round. Who could believe it? Uh, nice imaginary shot there from uh, Harris. It really could go in there at this point. Um, really high level play here from two absolute juggernauts of the sport. Hold. Uh, the bucket getting moved back to its proper place. It's about time, if you ask me. She's uh, juggling it around from her hands. Uh, interesting. And she's uh, put it in her mouth like as if it was an egg. And now she's um, and she's spat it out. She did the egg spit. So uh, a wonderful move there, quite late on. Illegal spit. Uh, Illegal from spit. Stryker. But she's in it Harris. to win it. Harris is ball. Bonnet, like a car bonnet. Uh, Tommy Harris here, having a bit of beef. Banana. And he's peeling it as if it were a banana, which is an interesting move. Um, not sure if he hasn't had his potassium or what's going on today with Harris. Yeah. And he's trying to have a banana with the ball! What a fantastic move there from Harris! Yeah. Unfortunately, that is the end. What a pathetic... There we go, Jeremy, that is over. How can he look his eight-year-old son in the face tonight? <laughs> what a lump! Uh, we can't follow this now to announce British sports, man. Position. I don't know the rules. Mm -hmm. Contestants in, please. And the winner of the first annual sports board championship is... Once again, a win for everyone, uh, including me as my 15th win in the Sports Board Championship. Um, I'm going to be celebrating tonight you with too. my wife and children. Uh, another wonderful victory for me. Uh, here come the on-site security to collect their medals, uh, their sixth and seventh respectively. Um, and thanks again for watching the uh, Sports Board Championship. Uh, what more is there to say? I'm Patrick Bannon. Um, looking what forward the to fuck is this? Tonight. And all I know is that to say, Jeremy, back to you in the studio. Patrick Ballon there had an extraordinary final. Historic sports board, Jeremy. I didn't know you were a fan. Oh, yeah, I can wrench a doubler with the best of them, I'll have you know. I certainly wouldn't bet against you. <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> I'll be talking live with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, who apparently have a big announcement you wouldn't want to miss. That's coming up after these messages. One minute back. Fucking microphone struck me. What? Fucking microphone just dropped me. Where's that sound guy? Everything okay? Oh, the mics are just trying to kill us now, apparently. You'll be fine. You're unshockable. Oh, I'm immune dad. to your chin. And an enlarged prostate gland. Movement again. Just heard from the chaps in. All right, hang on. I gotta get a. Bye bye. Maintenance. The storm is causing a lot of power surge. Some of your controls might be a bit uh, 
dangerous. Now, I know you're tough and you can take the odd shot for the sake of a perfect news broadcast, but too many in quick succession can stop the old ticker. I'm sure you'll make the right decisions. Boozman out. Alright, so too many and I die, or what? So what caused this big old prostate in your bum? Well, sorry, me and the doctors, we don't know. But I can tell you, as you get older, your body changes. And that's okay. If you're worried about your swollen bum sack, book an appointment, for God's sake. Mm. Procedure is easy, it's quick, and it's not gay. I'm Tommy the Fingernail Harris. Rectums, check them. No, let me rhyme. <coughs> Welcome back. I am delighted to be joined by Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. Welcome to the National Nightly News, Prime Ministers. Oh, please, it's just Julia and Peter. We don't believe much in titles. What? Delighted to be here. Well, firstly, I should ask how you feel about mm. graffiti that's been springing up across the capital. Should we be worried? No, oh, no, no, you definitely shouldn't be worried. Well, not unless you've got a fatal paint allergy anyway. But yes, it does seem that there are still some people we haven't been able to help. Mm. You know, whinges mostly. Uh, people who get to benefit from the many advantages of the new future. And you know, Megan, as my old mum used to say, there are some pissants who just don't know how to be happy. We're working hard to reach these people, find out what they're angry about and how we can help. The door to my government is always open. So much dripping on me. But we didn't come here to talk about what may yet turn out to be some alternative arts project. Which we no doubt will have funded. When we want to talk to the nation about something far more mm. exciting. Yes, your office briefed us that you have an announcement to make, but they were being surprisingly secretive about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Megan. Oh, OK, it's not usually how it works, but... <laughs> what scares you? I mean, really scares you? Ah, oh... It's um... death, in fact. She's talking about death. We're all afraid of our deaths. It's part of being human. I'm about to get nice Are you saying that advance have cured death? <laughs> ah, that would be a vote winner. Yep, yeah, that was definitely a drop there. But while we may not have cured death, we hope we found a way to make it much less scary. And much less painful and much less expensive. Look, which is me close up camera? Okay, there? yes, it's, it's camera four. When I was 13, me ma'am came and got me from school. He had to go to the hospital. My granddad, he'd collapsed that morning, so we'd all to say our goodbyes. And I went in to see him, he were all frail and pale. And I, I, I was scared because I'd only seen him the week before, and he'd been fit as fiddle. And he said to me, Peter, he said, it's the right time. I don't ever want to be a burden to the people I love. Was that the last time you saw him? Nope, three days later he were back home. He lived with us for nine miserable years after that. He had to be fed with a rubber spoon. He had a commode, so he'd just take a shit right there in the lounge while we were watching football. He wouldn't even wait till half time. That sounds... Oh, um... it, it was awful. It was awful for us, but, and this is the point. It was awful for him. He could see it was destroying me, man, watching him slowly fade away. And he would beg her to turn off his breathing equipment at night, but she couldn't. One she more. Couldn't. It were a crime, you see. And she didn't want to lose the children, as well as her old man. No family should have to suffer like Peter's did. And now, no family will have to. The health service is today opening the first of 300 new transition centres. The transition centres will handle everything for your last days. The legal, financial, medical and emotional costs are all catered for and paid for by the government. So, even the poorest citizen gets to pass on with dignity when they choose. And that choice is important. Yes. This is a service only for people who choose it. For people who feel they run their course and don't want to burden themselves or their families with a slow, long, humiliating decline. It's an idea. Oh, this is not for 
that? You've just given me an electric job. Are you OK? I, I, I don't know. I freaking fried my asshole. Are no. we still on the air, Peter? No, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. My apologies Oh. Are, are you not worried that this new system like might a... be open to abuse? In what way? Well, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I've got a sack to get. Can I get a little bit of help here? Please. <laughs> That the older generation might feel somewhat. Jesus, I lost your face, That one was massive. Right, no, this bastard's coming off. The, the, sorry, the, the older generation Fuck. might feel somewhat coerced. <laughs> I was one away from perfect. Their final days eating gourmet food and drinking fine wine and luxury spas and gardens. Look, I am perfectly capable of. Prime Minister, please watch your language. Go get yourself sorted out. Right. <laughs> We're launching a government information film tonight. It should tell your viewers everything they need to know. <laughs> I'm really doing a bit of breathless pace. It's hard to believe you've yet to be an office a year. Oh, Megan. We're only getting started. <laughs> and on that note, thank you both so much for being here. Jeremy. Right, yes, um, that's all we have time for tonight. Uh, thank you to go out to our guests. Um, congratulations to all the winners at the Sports Board Final, and we'll see you tomorrow night at the same time. My name is Jeremy Dawson. If you can, have a peaceful night. And we're out. Good job, everybody. So they just... Yes, I don't suppose there's any way this could be a, a good thing. Well, it's my nephew to have me transition the moment I start the league. Why did I die? Did I die? I didn't die. It was scripted, right? Why would I do that? I completely done this. I can't believe they've done this. Bro. I don't know about this fucking 20 pages of fucking or 25 pages of fucking reading in between. Ah. Oh. Run it, let your kids die. I don't want to get the worst ending though. True, my bet my ending is literally what the fuck? Jenny. No professionalism. What the hell happened? It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's radical <laughs> and characterful, and I expect you to know the difference. Of course, Megan's place looked lovely, but I can't see it, can I? 
Thanks, Jenny. How's locking with the boyfriend going? Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic comedy. <laughs> Jeremy, Jenny says your hair looks stupid. Yes, I can hear her. And she says she's not talking to you. Yes, I know, I can hear her. Shall I count us in? Make it so. OK, ten seconds. Break a leg, everyone. Preferably a furry one. Five, four, three... It's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolfe, our main stories tonight. Snugglepuck? It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snugglehug's toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. Oh, the Mr. Cool. Snugglehug's we have so short-sightedly destroyed. And now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly traditional gender stereotypes, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. This frightening new development means that even those previously thought to be relatively safe, like the young and fit, must take care to watch their backs and keep their ears open for the soft steps of sinister feet. Going stir crazy, with no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out and the government lockdown now in its 31st day, domestic relationships across the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of uncharacteristically bold behaviour in homes across the country. And we're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. With dating options limited, many house sharers, in particular students, are finding solace in co-tenants they'd previously rejected as unfuckable, indulging in an activity that has become known as snuggle thugging. Going it alone, popular crustacean Johnny Hamsleeves is back in the news today as his astonishing photograph that he lived himself shows exactly how he's been spending his lockdown. It seems that when the lockdown was announced, Johnny's long-term partner, Tiffany Lemour, was busy in the capital preparing her new show, Chocolate Clit Bombs, for its now postponed grand opening. Let's hope the exhibits don't melt. It's great to see a celebrity using their time wisely, as the government suggests, by developing a new hobby or fetish, and most importantly, by keeping your spirits up. Nice to see Johnny doing his little bit. The shape of things to come? In their own version of a lockdown for more than 45 years now, the descendants of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sporsborg and Horgensvord and their unfortunate team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface using flagellized imaging equipment. Many of the Sporsborg and Horgens brood, as they've come to be known, have certainly captured the public imagination, with a recent vote naming Helvetica Sporsborg and Wongensvord the most likely to survive a massive electric shock. Greetings, Upsiders. This is Times Forsborg and Wongensford reporting from Dante's Taint on our 3,756th day in this miserable fucking cave. Every day is the same. Oh, is that something new on the wall? Of course it isn't. It never fucking is. And mum and dad talking about science all the fucking time. Who cares about science? I'm young. I want to do young people's things like vandalism and teenage pregnancy but every eligible partner in this undersea toilet was grown from the same fungal fronds as I was that's a rocket turn off the stove why haven't you come to save us yet we're practically human like oh, shit dad's coming it's hard to believe they've been down there so long now but everyone knows time moves differently underwater, Jeremy. That's why baths take so long. That's right. And as anyone will tell you, the deeper the bath, the quicker the relativistic forces of temporal causality will have a measurable effect upon the fixed dimensional parameters of your environment. Yes, I've said that many times. Papers, please. With the lockdown becoming ever more rigorously enforced, having a passport is becoming increasingly important, Alex. The government caused controversy today by announcing a fresh charge of passport fraud with an imaginative form of punishment for those found guilty of this brand new but incredibly serious crime. The international community have been critical of Advance's decision to begin branding those found to be abetting passport fraudsters. The red hot metal may seem painful, but I'm told it's actually preferable to most music currently in the charts. <laughs> and Advance speaks out. With the snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world, Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. 
In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been listening and that this should be taken as a response to how the people really feel. We've certainly done our bit on this show to contribute to the political climate. But let's not forget, how we behave in our home lives is what really matters. Let's hope it's not just me who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> let's play that statement. Let's play that statement. Evening. Apparently, we need to have a chat about playing by the rules. So, the other night I were at my local park for research purposes, and there were a bunch of lads having a kickabout without a care in the world. And not only did they refuse to let me join in, they wouldn't even let me have a swig of their white stripe. Laughing and joking they were, like there weren't a national crisis on until one of them little pink demons followed them home and kicked the shit out of their nan. So, I've got two things to say to you young, fit folk. One, stay at home. It's not for you. It's to protect your Aunt Mabel and Bill next door. And two, always, always share your booze with your Prime Minister. As me old man used to say, there's only two type of folk. Then we will help you across the road with the shopping. And then we will kick you in the fanny and nick your macaroni. So don't be a pasta snatcher. Stay at home. Have a brandy. And this will be all over before you know it. Thank you. Delectable stuff. Later tonight, Jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter Patrick Bannon while I check in with two friends of the programme who find themselves stranded at opposite ends of the country. And then, in part three, there's going to be a quiz. Presumably because there's nothing more important going on that you might like to report on if you were saying a news programme. And in a moment, we'll both be asking Sophia Remington how such a trusted brand can have made such a terrible manufacturing mistake. With what it describes here as help, from popular psychic scientist, Delia Lywell. Oh, I like her. <laughs> no, you don't. Why do you do that? Well, that's all coming up on tonight's... National Nightly News. Going. And most importantly, who's to blame? Joining us from her ranch in Arlingsfield, Millkirky, is the CEO of Remington's Fist, internationally respected business Bengali, Sophia Remington. Thank you for having me, Megan. I'm a huge fan of your work. And from a crystal healing laboratory, what I assume is a garage in Upper Lowington, inexplicably renowned psychic scientist, Dr. Delia Lywell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Sorry, us? Myself and the eminent professors. Is that what you call the voices in your head? I've always seem to attract dead scientists. I don't really know why. The money? They express themselves to me through ethereal algebra and quadratic predictions. It's all very technical. No, it isn't. I concur. Miss Remington, the entire Snuggle Hugs range will surely go down as the biggest public relations disaster in history, won't it? Well, of course, that's one world record we would never have sought to claim. What can you say at a time like this? There is only one thing that can be said. I'm sorry. We're sorry. From everyone here at Remington's Fist, but especially the dedicated inventors and world-beating engineers at Rimming Toys, we are deeply, deeply sorry. Who could have predicted that letting a child's toy learn how to love could have such unforeseen consequences? Mary Shelley? <laughs> We see you, Sophia Rimmington. You are preening by a metal vessel, and where you venture, you will see neither land nor sky. Is that supposed to be the future? Only the past is concrete. I remember being a child in my grandpa's workshop when he made the first dancing hangman toy. He put it by my bed, and when I couldn't sleep, I'd wind it up and let it go, and I'd watch that happy little execution as it wiggle and wave its tiny noose and dance before my eyes. Grandpa sold thousands of them, on the quiet, obviously. 
and he used the money he made to found Rimming Toys, which is now just one small part of the global supermassive megacore that is Remington's Fist. Sadly, we lost Grandpappy along the way. He died in a fire at the preschool tobacco factory, another one of his pet projects. But we never lost his spirit of invention. Yes, uh, I'm not entirely certain what your grandfather's offensive toys have to do with the current predicament. The spirit of invention, Mr. Donaldson. The passion to create, to problem solve. And that is why I'm here today, to tell you about a brand new product we're launching simultaneously around the world from midnight to night. Woo! We said science! Science! <laughs> We hear its song on the breeze, its breath on the wind, its fart under the covers. How does she do it? Well, well please, don't keep us in suspense any longer. It won't be my feature she's making up next. Remington's Fist is proud to present Snuggle Traps. Safety and security in these dangerous times. Each box of Snuggle Traps contains eight devices, all guaranteed to stop a missing Snuggle Hug in its breath. That's enough for a small lawn or four window boxes. And you want to know the best thing? They're only $129.99 a box. Now that is affordable peace of mind. <gasps> we see you, Jeremy Donaldson. Not now, honey, I'm mid-pitch. The best thing about Snuggle Traps is they're powered by next generation Flardinium batteries. So, however long the enemy lasts, these traps will outlast them. We see you, Mr. Donaldson. You are screaming and yelling. Your friends are crying. They fear you. And then you're gone. Oh my god, I just got chills. Did anyone else just get chills then? <laughs> I got chills, but just... I think it's more concerned. I think I'd be more concerned about these traps. <laughs> um, quickly, before we go to the break, um, these appear to be attractively repackaged landmines. Aren't they dangerous, say, to children? Oh, hell yeah. These are not toys. But they're explosive fun. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lywell, thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the situation across the country tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back after these bandages. Was that all right? Oh yes, Doctor. That's exactly what we. <laughs> Wait, did I play the right ad? Very nice, that young Miss. I played. Oh, fuck. Make an interesting dinner guest. Do you think so? I think I'd rather spend the evening shoving dinner sacred crystals up my skeptical ass. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Let's order this one. To say, buddy, if you're listening, build a better life for yourself. You want crazy? Uh, I, we got crazy. Exactly. crazy deal. You don't want to People believe this, but I got started I've in decided to come home, home. listen up, call you back in the next break, and we can talk about how I get me job back. Well, Cheers, Alex. Like see you, mate. You more of a hunch look, My and job a now. Popular. I used to have a ventriloquist act. I cheated, rather, because I trained a dog to talk. You can get down on all fours and yap like a dog for only $22.99 a month. This is a deal with Neil Appeal. It's the actual. You once said, said to me, said I had a mission. You must know, you're not stupid. Sometimes you're the alien and sometimes you're the cow. Hey, no, 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 Jenny. You're not backing out on me now. Hey, dude, get together. off my wife. They wanted to increase recruitment for none. Make the cake, you're bombs. on the blue. I've got no idea how old he is. 40? 17? Yeah, yeah, ready. <clears throat> okay, coming back. In five, four, three... Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Ruth. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly faces. Joining me are respected academic Katie Brightman and author of Alan James's Kites, Alan James. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Megan. Thanks, Megan. It really is a pleasure. He looks like I the, the skit guy, mm, no? I wish I could say the same. So first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh I don't know, no, isn't what happened? I was staying at a hotel after an international policy convention and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. <laughs> they notoriously hate splitting the bill. <laughs> and I overslept and, as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly people much worse off than me. I don't know, it's exactly. like a name. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely, and I've had to refund every single but he ticket, does even the cheapest. SNL skits, I think. Oh, Alan, I'm so sorry to hear comedy that. Comedy show. Yeah. Uh, people are being quite rude about it. 
They don't seem to realise no, they've already spent it, filling the beach Comedy house central. with beef. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James's Reich, is now available in paperback. Unbelievable. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. So, Katie, how do you think this might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Unemployment has skyrocketed, and frankly, it will be a miracle if a lot of businesses can survive this. There you go, scaremongering again, spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. Shh. They want us compliant. And they want us inside. A hoax? How on earth can you say that, Alan? Well, I haven't actually seen one of these supposed toys. Have you? Well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 people die every year from regular toys? That's a lot of people. And this is no different. You're just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. Mm, he makes an excellent and persuasive point, Katie. Don't listen to her, Katie. The press are the enemy of truth. She's this agreeing with you, COVID. Alan, you absolute shit. Well, then I must be wrong. Alan, are you now recounting your statement that these toys aren't dangerous? People are saying they're just like normal toys, and that simply isn't true. Corrupt media lies. And Katie, how do you respond to Alan's claims that Mrs Snugglehugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose I, I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs. Snugglehug situation will all blow over, but it won't. Uh, yes, right, exactly. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge financial support to protect our workers and our businesses. We need to support the vulnerable, and we need to... to repent. To... Exactly right, Katie. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like our cake and mm. health care. We need to act now and begin sacrificing our firstborns, or at a push of a loved family's head. Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appease the Great Ancient. <laughs> Katie, could it be any worse? Luckily, over the past few years under advance, they've invested heavily into health, so the system can actually bear the strain. Is it lucky that the Llama Lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to conceal the enemy within? Will you just stop for five fucking seconds? The Global Alliance of Fish People are amassing an army me, 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 me. Uh, and, uh, amassing an army to kidnap me, 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 me. That's you. That's what you sound like. But... Me. I... Me. The... Me. The... Me. I don't... I don't sound like that. Yes, you do. You do, Alan. You do sound like that. And that's why no one wants to be your friend. I've got loads of friends. No, you haven't. I don't think you do, Alan. Yeah, stop lying, Alan. I'm not lying. You are... Oh, good one. Well, I'm telling. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. Some real food for thought there from two of the Territory's leading minds. Any moment now, <laughs> I'll be heading be over to Jeremy, one, who is going to be bringing us an up-to-the-minute report of the status had the of like two years. the nation. Over to you, Jeremy. Thank you for what I'm sure was a reasonable debate which really contributed to the national conversation. Next, out on the streets, Someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello. I'm here. I'm here live. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and uh, can you tell us what it's like out there? Yep, I can. It's uh, uh, As you can see behind me, the streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, so my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just around the corner, waiting to end the fledgling career of this young, promising journalist before his, his full potential is even realised? Will he die underappreciated by management and, frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid? I don't think there's any danger of that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh, that, that's actually a sponge. Uh, I've made a, what I've done here is made a snuggle-proof jacket, Jeremy. Uh, the network didn't bother sending me any PPE, uh, so I've been forced to implement. Hello, Fawson. Uh, awesome. Thank you for joining our moderation team.
On screen 1 you have the broadcaster, screen 2 is Chaturina, screen 3 is Discord, screen 4 is chat logs. Look at your left. Do you see the red button? This is the ban button. Click it hard, Mr. Force. Mm -hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? I'm, 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 I'm in the street, on the street. Which street? Uh, I'm, um, uh, I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, actually, uh, Jeremy, there. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? <laughs> um, I'm, oh, God. Um, I'm just looking for a sign. Um, I was, oh, it's, there it is. I, I'm, I'm on ba uh, uh, Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Bannon Avenue. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign, it says there. Like Patrick Bannon? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that is like, that's strange, that's a weird sign. I don't know what's going on there. Where are you, really? I'm on Bannon, um... All right, fine, I'm not on Bannon Avenue, I'm on, I'm at home, to be honest. I'm... All right, fine, well, I mean, I'm in my bathroom, technically, but, you know, I, I couldn't face it, to be honest, mate. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there, I don't want to go outside, they're everywhere. I'm sorry for lying. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. Can you hear that sound? What was that? I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist tapping on your door there. Oh, fuck, it does. Oh, fuck, Jeremy, shit, no! Oh, boy. Perhaps there's a oh. small queue of tiny fists, each wielding a different gendered household implement. Ready to bash yeah. in the heads of lying little roving reporters. Of lying you're lying, aren't you? Reporters. Oh you're shit! Lying. Fucking, okay, fucking, fucking, listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastards! Fucking, listen, if you're out there, listen to me, you just piss off, fired. you little fucking snuggle fuck! Piss off, you I'm too talented to die! I'm too talented to die! Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Oh god, it's fine. Oh god. Don't worry, Patrick. Uh, I'll tell you that a few seconds before they bring their way in there and finish you off. Fuck. What do you see, Patrick? What do you see, Patrick? Thank you, Patrick, for that report showing the nation and, uh, more importantly, management just where you belong. It's time for another break, but uh, when we come back, we'll be hoping to take your mind off the world for a little while, and who knows, maybe even bring you a few smiles. Join us after this. You're damn right. Yeah, I had them delivered. Yes, to Bannon Avenue. The exclusive Lewis in the studio. Captain's down. Worse. Chef's down and we're out of rum. I'm not sure I'm going to make it to sobriety or dry land. And if I had a missus, I'd ask you to tell her that I love her. But to be honest, I've kind of pissed my life away, mate. Still, at least I'm outdoors, eh? Bashed on the head. What the fuck is this, son? The fuck? To you lose consciousness. Don't miss this shocking offer. It really is the frying of a life. No, I'm not. Uh, Roll your eyes with your teacher now, and we'll send you. I don't have to. No, you're being a child. I'm not. What? The I'm fuck? not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No. No. Oh. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly. Well, welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight, we have something a bit different for you. Even though some people have heard it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other, more important people overruled those people. So it's time to find out who will National Nightly win, and who will National Nightly lose. F National Nightly, National Nightly lose. So, how do we play? 
Well, joining me is a man who knows all about playing. It's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. All right, Johnny. It's good to see you. And uh, how are you finding a lockdown, Tommy? Would you be locked down? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Ah, yeah, I think I heard about that, actually, yeah. You're in bed, Tommy. Yeah, you called during nap time, so... Of course, that's my fault. So, um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, it's pretty simple, Jeremy, you sausage. I'm going to ask contestants from around the territory three questions about what else? Yours truly. And those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize. And what are they playing for, Tommy? Drum roll, please. Jeremy. Oh. Thank you. This. What Jeremy. the fuck? Oh. But I've signed it, so. Oh, well then. What a fantastic prize. Have we got anybody waiting to win this once-in-a-lifetime prize, Jerry and Jimmy? I believe we have Angie on the line. Um, how do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? I've never been so excited, Jeremy. And can I just say, I love you. Both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't you? Oh, Angie, I love you. In a way. Tell us about yourself, Angie. Well, what can I say? Uh, my name is Angie. <laughs> Always has been. Um... I'm a human woman, Fun. and my dental hygiene has been described as acceptable. Brilliant! Right, well, shall we get this shambles on the way? Absolutely, John. Can I get 30 seconds on the clock, please? We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a clock. So... Well, um, why don't you start, and I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right, here we go. Time starts n -n 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 now. Question one. When is my birthday? The 13th of August at 7.19am. That is absolutely correct. Question two. What? I said, what is my favourite colour? Crushed praline four. Correct. The colour of my nipples. And finally, Angie dear, what is my star sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. Unbelievable. That is correct. Stop the clock. Wow, that really was tough to watch. How did you do, Tommy? Well, Angie, my love, you got every single question right. Which, of course, means you lose and win absolutely nothing. Thanks for playing, Angie. Bye. Do we have another contestant on the line at Jelly Bean? We do indeed. We should have Sonia Hartleach. Are you there, Sonia? <laughs> of course I am, Jamie, darling. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Sonia. Oh, there you are, Tommy. Mwah. Let me guess, you work in theatre, don't you? Is it that obvious? <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the glamour or poise? <laughs> it certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. <laughs> 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 Tell us about yourself, Sonia. Oh, well, if you must play this game, <laughs> I am a theatrical agent. I represent the likes of Rudy Beefman, Samuel Coffee Cup, and Jodie Carpetburn, amongst others. And how's the lockdown affected you, Sonia? Well, they may have closed the theatres, shut the studios, and boarded up the cinemas, but they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my artist contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. <laughs> wow, that certainly is sharp. Standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep costs down. And uh, who's this? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when they gave the order, I was actually mid-meeting with a client, so we've been isolated together. No fucking way! What the fucking fuck? Is that Tommy Harris? I'm a huge fan. Can I just tell you how bloody brilliant you are? Actually, Jeff, we're about to play a game, no, aren't no, we, no. Tommy? We've got time, we've got time. 
Well, if it's not too bold, I think I am in love with you, Mr. Harris. No, no it's not too bold. That's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, I I'd love to show you some of my stuff. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. Do you Lockdown. Uh, we've been workshopping some of Jeff's ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People still let you near their children, do they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've been developing uh, some shows for younger children. Hmm. Well, we'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? Absolutely dying to. <laughs> right, so, what do kids love? Uh, timely just put payments from their absent fathers. Shallow and overproduced musical numbers? That's right. Animals! So, I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? I think... yes. I think so, yes. Jeff's one of my best clients, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah. So, the first one we've been working on is called The King of the Jungle's Mortgage Repayments. It's about a lion who's having problems with his interest rates. I see. Does he have a broker? Uh, he does. Yes, yes. He's a porcupine. Uh, how did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. Oh. It speaks oh. to people. <laughs> I'm going to say something to you, mate. I think you're onto something here. Oh, oh the bear, the bear. Oh, the yes, bear. yes, yes, yes. Right. <clears throat> this one is much better. Mm -hmm. So, this one tells the tale of Mr. Bear. Now, Mr. Bear... <laughs> He's a very sad bear, because all of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much, and they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative. I think you're onto something there. Now, Mr Bear is a tragic figure. Picture this. He's at his lowest ebb. The trees are closing in. He can't even face his salmon, can he? But then he meets someone that will change his life forever. This is Fucking gripping. That's right. He meets a wise old octopus who takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr. Bear, don't be sad. You're not like all the other bears. You have this ambition and these dreams. Such fucking dreams. I think I love you, Jeff. <laughs> and what you need to do, Mr. Bear, says the octopus, probably doing an eight-armed gesture or something. <laughs> what you need to do to find happiness in this crazy old forest is you need to set yourself more realistic goals. It's called Mr. Bear lowers his expectations. Wow. You really have to take yourself to new depths. And what do you oh. want children to take away from this? Oh, fuck shit. Shit, fuck. What? I said a more realistic worldview. Are you all right, Jamboree? It's Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey Listen. Donington. Uh, no, stop. How does it end? We need to know how it ends. Well, all the animals learn a thing or two about inevitable mediocrity. Yeah, and Mr. Bear settles down near to his parents' cave, stops trying to make his band happen, and he goes into, into bear telemarketing. Hmm. And becomes a bear math teacher. Oh, and we end. Oh, 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 we end on a big musical number. Oh, there's dancing. Uh, it's very <laughs> repetitive, so it's catchy but not too challenging. Um, well, Fuck if off. you like, I could go and get my boombox. Yeah, uh, do you know, I might be able to. Hang on. Uh, can we get Angie back? Why not? The more, the merrier, as they say at orgies. Right, I'll just fill then, shall I? Coming up in a moment, it's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Lights! Or wanted. At all. Right. I can only apologise in what? advance what we're all about to... ...endure. Did you turn this shit in thing? Ah! Yeah. All sorts of creatures Down on Dangly Doodle Farm Like wise old Mr Octopus with way too many arms. There's Mr. Pig and Mr. Cow, they're always in good moods. But that's cause they don't know they'll soon be sliced up into food. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Mr. 
Dakota Coon who wants to go to the moon. He'll end up as a bus driver soon. Mr. Porcupine thinks he'll read the news at nine. He'll end up as a janitor who stinks of turpentine. Mr. Tiny Mouse thought he'd own a massive house. Ended up in a bedsit where he can't control the louse. Mr. Horse thought he'd go into professional sports. Now he's an alcoholic and he's on his third divorce. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the place your life becomes an endless questionnaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to die. Lower your expectations Maybe you could get a job in telecommunications No matter how you try, you'll never reach the League of Nations The best you'll get is middle rank in trading operations So lower your expectations You'll never win an Oscar, so there's no congratulations. The future that is coming will not meet specifications. And no amount of visualizations will save you from your own deterioration. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's a Trump who thought he'd be a multi-millionaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where self-esteem goes to die. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the disappointment that is waiting everywhere. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. That's where your dreams go to die. That's where dreams go to die. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll all still be singing that tomorrow morning. Mr. Bear. Many thanks to all our guests. I look forward to seeing them all again. Eventually. But before we go, Alex, I wondered if I might have a word. You see, I've had my eye on you, friend, and I've got to say I'm not liking what I'm seeing. You keep letting me down, chum. Playing it safe. Making the dull, boring choices. It's time to me. Assert yourself. No one likes a pushover, Alex. You know that. And frankly, chum, you're acting like a bit of a wimp. Alex, will you give away your passport so my super rich sibling can abandon us all? Sure. Here it is. Pathetic. Can I have the money we need for food so I can go around the continent on a jolly? Sure, Susie. We can always eat your grandma when we run out of food. <laughs> Wouldn't it have felt better to take charge? Aren't you tempted to just lay down the law? You know what's hot, Alex? Other than me, obviously. Confidence, power, control. We're all drawn to it like rats to the piper. Don't you care where your son goes at night? He will when you find out. Look far be it from me to try and lead you down the dark pathway, although sort of is my whole raison d'etre. But imagine, just for a mm -hmm. moment, that none of this was real. <laughs> Wrong. Imagine if Sam and Charlie and Susie were just characters. Well... Think of all the fun you could have. Just being bad, you know. For the hell of it. My name's Megan Wolf. Have an evil night. Ugh. Jen? I'm just gonna go see my guy. Okay, can you get Bozeman on the phone? Babe, I don't care if this is a dream. A bad trip or a shock-induced coma. I did not sign up to be dressed like a slag doshing out wristies for a 20. All right, I'm, I'm a professional news anchor. Not a fucking bogan. It's bad enough that he makes me do that unconvincing accent the whole time. I mean, look at this. My skirt's so 
so short you can see my jute. Why don't you wake up? Wake up! 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 Wake uh, neutral. Day 154, a rude awakening. Don't Broke snap. ass poor. Hey, what the hell, man? The rhythmic beeping of the heart monitor brings you slowly back to consciousness. Opening your eyes, you're greeted by a semi-circle of concerned faces. Your family by your side, a reassuringly familiar sight in these new surroundings. You blink a few times to clear the sleep from your eyes and bring everyone into focus. You feel a hand on yours, gentle but reassuring. Sam, there with you as always. Their expression, understandably concerned, is somehow more affectionate than ever. We knew you'd be okay, never doubted for a second. <laughs> and if I ever see that boast man, you squeeze their hand back and attempt to wink. The worry lines on Sam's forehead fade a bit. Lord knows you both got enough to be anxious of without your health being thrown into the mix. With a final smile at them, you turn to the rest of your family. Just as you feel Susie's absence, you notice Charlie's fid Charlie fidgeting, clearly trying not to look worried. As soon as you turn to look at him, you can see Charlie tense up, his concern clear on his face. So, you're definitely good, right? He finally asks, quickly looking away. Of course I am, buddy. There's nothing to worry about. I'll be fine, Charlie. Leave the blanket alone. Charlie's face drops, and he plants his hands firmly in his pockets. Avoiding Sam's gaze, you notice your mother staring uh, listlessly out the window. Despite all of your best efforts, she's not been doing well lately. Are you okay, mom? Your mother starts, you call, clearly shocking her out of her river. She turns to you and smiles, and you're grateful to see the increasingly rare recognition within in her eyes. Yes, dear, of course. How are you feeling? You smile warmly and nod, but before you can respond, a doctor bustles in and ushers everyone out. She asks you, for what feels like the hundredth time, how you're feeling? Surprisingly well, all things considered. Excellent. There's no sign of any real damage, just a bit of a shock to the old system. Pardon the pun, she smiles. Not that we'd recommend you do anything like that again, of course. After a couple of days rest at home, you should feel as right as a rain. She turns to leave, but stops at the door. Oh, and the private room and care, the doctor gestures to your room, which you now notice looks rather expensive. Has all been paid for by Mr. Boseman. He left those flowers and said not to worry and take the rest of the week off. He'll see you Monday, apparently. Seems like the least he could do. Day 179. 80. <laughs> a burden to bear. You come home from a particularly late shift to find the kitchen lights still on. Which isn't normally a good sign. Everyone's usually in bed by now. Softly opening the kitchen door you find Sam sat at the table. Bills and papers are strewn in front of them, as well as what looks to be their second pack of biscuits. They, show, they shoot you a strange smile as you take a seat next to them. Sam frowns and goes back to the bills they're holding. Hey sweetheart, just looking at the numbers again. They look, at, they look to the door to the pantry, now converted into your mother's bedroom. We've been doing our best, but I think Cassandra really needs a nurse to look after her now. Suddenly the bills are all you can see. I've been staring at the numbers all night, tears in their eyes, Sam takes your hand. There's no way we can afford it. I'm so sorry, the kitchen table swims before you. 
Sam stands up and pulls you into a firm embrace, but all you can think of is your mother and how you can't afford to help her. What would your dad be thinking now? Is this the utopia advance promised? You stare at the door to your mother's makeshift room. Tomorrow, you need to tell the kids and then book an appointment at the transition center. What else could you have done? Day 201, a letter home. Sam's out with the work tonight and Charlie's staying at a friend's. The house is yours. You order a takeaway, have a couple of drinks and decide to relax in front of the TV. Not a great selection tonight, but surely something to watch. You feel like a laugh. Comedy it is. Sam's not here, but you can still watch a horror without them. You just want to switch off. Action thriller is the one. Sam isn't a fan of historical dramas, so you make the most of them being away. Uh, we watch a uh, horror. The atmosphere and the story are better than you were expecting, making you jump more than once. After a particularly shocking emergence of the lolling lumberer, you accidentally kick the coffee table, revealing a small object hidden behind one of the legs. As you bend down and reach for it, you recall the note Sam left on the fridge. Hey sweetheart, Charlie lost Susie's present. Would you mind looking for it tonight? As you hold it closer, you're surprised to find the gift's actually an engraved lighter for Chippy. She claims the nickname's affectionate, but Charlie still scolds every time she says it. You're not sure Sam would approve. The accompanying note from Susie explains Irkistan has a long tradition of glorifying the art of starting fires. Thought you'd like it, don't do anything stupid, Zeus. However, it's just a souvenir and not new pastime is picked up or about to pick up. It's not that she thought of them. You don't Zeus. <laughs> you lose. My god! There's like 30 pages of lore, but only like one decision to make. Within all those. Like what the fuck? Choices matters. The silence. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, my shit is repaired. All right, no more cocksuckers. Why is this fan on? All right. Huh? Hello? Any cocksuckers? Am I deaf? Oh shit. Turn his wife's casserole dish to our dinner next week. Jenny. I'm sorry, Kath, you're gonna have to leave. Leave. Letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded Ten me. Ten seconds, everybody. That's all part of a team oh, these fuck, days. Oh fuck, ads. Better damn Just stop being so high. Five, four, three, two. Don't tempt me. Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad-ranging. Include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. So how do you feel about the sanctions? I actually think that with advance in charge, we'll be fine. Of course, the rest of the world will want us to fail, or it will be their billionaires next. But I trust Julia and Peter. Thanks, Patrick. Fascinating stuff. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. We are a democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognise these sanctions. And we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. Advance have struck fear 
into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I wish we could improve other countries as much as we have our own, we do not rely on the help of others to thrive. This country is entirely self-sufficient. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Defiant stuff. But what do you, the public, think of our government's stance? Robin Short found Bro. It. Oh my god! Yeah, I fucking clicked it. I fucking pressed five or something. I'm just gonna press four. Fucking cocksucker. <sighs> oh my god, brutal. At least it was in the start. Fucking Christ. Alright. Not Jenny. Problem. Maybe now I can understand what the fuck she's talking about. Don't worry, Kath, it'll be alright. No, it won't be alright, Kath. Pack up your weapons of optical destruction and get out. You realise you're beginning to sound like me? I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Jenny? This is not Jenny. Or yours. Oh, it's alright, I'll talk to Bucks with you. Oh, good. You can tell him I'll return his wife's casserole dish. Uh, 404 Tim Tim, welcome back. Sika Pliot, uh, FNXO with 76 months. Galancy, Capstra, and Ellison, welcome back. Welcome, uh, senores, senoritas. I'm sure it is this time. That's all part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy, you know that. Just stop This fucking thing is cancer. Four, three, don't tempt me. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What are your reaction to the sanctions? Off it's fucking outrageous. My mom needs insulin. Am I supposed to get her transitioned? What's the government doing about it, eh? Hey? Uh. What's the government doing about it? Thanks, Patrick. Uh. Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Patrick. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. We are a democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognise these sanctions and we encourage other socially progressive nations of the world to both resist and ignore them. Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I wish we could improve other countries as much as we have our own, we do not rely on the help of others to thrive. This country is entirely self-sufficient. We are a team, now more than ever, and this team is on your side. Fuck Thank yeah. Divine stuff. But what do you, the public, think of our government's stance? Robin Short found out. Hi there, I was wondering if you could spend a moment to give us your thoughts on the government. Honestly, I think they're doing a great job. I know the assets and world checks have made the difference for us for the cost of the little one. And people seem, you know, happier in the main. I always said things would get better with a woman in charge. <laughs> Over to you, fellas. Global mega corporation Remington Fist today announced that trials have successfully completed on their groundbreaking male contraceptive product, Responsibility. The drug has been passed by the government for general release, but the small print warns that, in rare cases, side effects can include blurred vision, enlarged genitalia, and increased risk of stroke. No double entendre intended. But what do you, the public, think of Sophia Remington's latest venture? I Patrick? think it's good. Progressive society. So what are your feelings on the new contraceptive pill? I think it's a great idea. <laughs> a big step forward for equality. 
Sophia Remington is the best thing that has ever happened to that company. The delicate sound of thunder. A frightening start for the commuters this morning, who were confronted by a somewhat sinister sight as they left their train. Many travellers reported feeling intimidated by the silent figures who stood motionless outside every major station in the capital. Radical extremist group Disrupt, who organised the show of strength, refused to comment on the meaning of the strange protest. Or to apologise to this presenter for making him drop his morning bagel in surprise. But how do we feel about these somewhat radical extremists and their upsetting methods? Robin found out. Do you have any feelings about Disrupt? It's all a bit noisy for me, really. As Mother always said, leave the rebelling to the rebels, Malcolm. Bubbling up, intrepid scientist Dr David Wong and Dr Ingrid Sforsborg and Hawkinsford today sent a blueprint of the escape craft in which they hope to finally leave Dante's taint. With expert opinions of the plan running the gamut from optimistically engineered to that looks like something my granddad made in his shed, it sounds like the unfortunate team are going to need all the thoughts and prayers they can get. So what should we think about the escape plan? Patrick Bannon again. So I'd imagine that you think this is a great plan. Oh my god! How did you know? It's a brilliant idea! I hope everyone gets behind them so that they know that we're with them. In spirit, of course. I can't actually go diving because I'm scared of salt. I am not a number. Applications finally open today for the new advanced team membership cards, a scheme by the government to allow fast access to all the new public services being introduced daily. The team membership cards are entirely voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major organisations, including the police, banks and right <gasps> clubs and bars. My freedom! Course, there's no charge, Jeremy. It all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Team membership cards? Absolutely bloody not. That's the thin end of the wedge, isn't it, Iris? First it's, can I see your identification, sir? And then it's, would you mind bending over the table, sir? So Sergeant State Educated and Constable Regional Accent here can stick their truncheon up your very out. Crikey! They should call them what they are. They're bloody ID cards. Oh, for Christ's sake, what is it, Iris? Oh, I'm really not happy, Algernon! I'm so sorry. Crikey. And finally tonight, back of the net, popular sports personality Johnny Hounsleeves and his fiancée Tiffany L'Amour were spotted out today doing a little shopping for what many are already calling the greatest wedding ever. We can only assume that Tiffany's latest show, My Teenage Secretions, has sold better than expected, what? as by the looks of things, the whole affair's about to become more expensive than Lil C's shoe collection. I don't know who that is. But what should your opinion be of this extravagant display of wealth? I'm very indifferent here. Don't really care, love. Wise words there. Later tonight, in a bit of a switcheroo, it'll be Jeremy in the culture chair, spitting rhymes with popular rapper Jay Zuss. And then we'll both be chatting with a familiar team of thespians set to take the nation by storm again. That's all coming up on tonight's National, National Nightly News. News. Oh, fucking shit in my ass. Thankfully, some news as we return to our main story. The World Council today agreed that punitive and potentially illegal sanctions should be imposed upon this country. The sanctions, which come into effect immediately, aim to stop the flow of food, fuel and even some medicines from reaching your pockets. Tonight, we have guests from across the continent to discuss this unprecedented situation. For advance, Peter Clement is at his home in Lanfordshire. Are you there, Peter? Yes, I can hear you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. A momentous day, Prime Minister. Are you shaken? No, oh, I don't scare that easy, I'm afraid, old son. And neither do the people of this country. Well, joining us is Ivan Vodovich, Foreign Minister of Urkistan. Ivan, thank you for being here. I didn't even see here. the yellow under the fucking thing is. You, Megan Wolf. 
are like strong as guard or labour camp who wake up inside body of crazy expensive prostitute. In my country, you may be worshipped as a god. Okay. Minister, as one of those arguing most strongly for these sanctions, how do you feel about Advance's defiant stance? Advance is like man who thinks he a big career in movies land. When actually, he in dirty sanitarium, screaming at me and holding tiny penis in hand. <laughs> He's clearly not from Svenland, and we have like some of the cleanest mental health facilities in the continent, yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Svenland's Minister of Mojo, Björk. I'm sorry, we don't appear to have your surname. It's just Björk, yeah. We don't use things like socially divisive surnames here, yeah. Minister? <laughs> it's just Björk, yeah. Right, um, Björk. Your country spoke in favour of advance at the World Council today, but you were noticeably absent when it came to the actual vote. Well, what a surprise. The hippies didn't show up for the fight. Actually, that's quite racist, because if you must know, we were going to go to the whole, like, vote thing, yeah. But it's actually the festival of Furelands here at the moment, where we honour the older generations. So, like, we all have to look, our grandparents, clean, yeah, while the vote was happening. And that's, like, a really, really time-consuming process, actually. You're like a sissy man. You have this expression, sissy man, is like man with tiny penis who like to wash more than once a week. <laughs> Actually, that's quite homophobic, yeah. Oh, because... stop winding him up. I mean, we're not back at the Grange now. Sorry, Jeremy. Ivan and I used to play golf back in my media days. Yeah, he always wins. Nothing gives him greater pleasure than grinding people's gears. The more publicly, the better. <laughs> Peter, you're like man with tiny penis who think he have tiny penis, but actually he discovered that. that Oh, could it be? No, it's tiny penis. Ivan's just worried that when the rest of the world sees how well we're doing, they'll notice all that dosh that he's got squirreled away. Because that's what these sanctions are, Megan. They're the last pathetic gasp of an establishment in collapse. Wolves at the gates, Ivan, old mate. Good. They can join others on my wall. Actually, in Svenland, we have, like, serious animal welfare legislation. And, like, my friend Helga, she got arrested yeah, for killing a butterfly that was hovering over her fuel thing. I mean, in English, uh, jam sandwich. I used to know a girl called jam sandwich. She would like a cracker, too. What, what became of her? We seem to be wandering a little from the news here. That's um, human interest, Jeremy. The real people behind the headlines and all that. So, uh, if you're watching, Jan... Give us a call. Really? Yeah. Let's see if we can't organise a reunion. Crash, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I'll have to run it past sure Mrs Clement first, eh? Yeah? <laughs> Peter, <laughs> you're like man trying to empty ashes of her in mistresses into a homecoming vent. Uh, soon you have tiny penis and beard full of secrets. In Spenland, we don't really go in for all that restricted monogamy stuff here. We're kind of flawed, actually. OK, well, it seems that we are running out of time. Yes, so before we go to the break, and um, briefly, if you would, gentlemen, with the people of this country facing shortages and power possible, outages. Possible shortages and power outages. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, possible shortages and power outages. Can you summarise your thoughts for us, uh, Minister Biak? Well, from here, yeah, you all look a bit stupid really arguing about outdated devices concepts like money. In Finland, we replaced currency with a system of bodily fluids back in the 1970s, and that's like a really hard to sanction. Sure. Really. Thank you, uh, Minister Votovic. Your country is like man who think he invented perfect trap for giant Newton hairy bear. But really, he's just standing in field holding, holding his tiny <laughs> penis. Yes, thank you, Minister. And finally, Prime Minister Clement. Let me talk to your viewers here, Jeremy. Don't worry, everybody. Don't be afraid. Don't even lose a wink of sleep. We knew the rest of the world would react this way, and we're ready. As me old man used to say, you can't make a shite pie without blocking a few toilets. Thank you, Prime Minister. Reassuring words there. We'll be back. After these messages. One minute back. Hey, Peter, I over your way this weekend. You fancy a quick nine? Yeah, sure, front or back. <laughs> That's what I hope you're asking Megan both for me. <laughs> She's out of your league, mate. And I haven't had children. Not yet, anyway. But it doesn't take a parent to tell you that what a child needs is to be wanted and loved. Sadly, however, these days, this sort of conversation happens far too often. Remington's fist, Remington's fist. So, you know, Brad, this past fortnight has really been amazing, but I'm afraid I have something to tell you. New government censorship. I'm pregnant. Should show up in blue. Same as
regular censoring. Keep an eye out for the advanced blue wave force. All right, Chinese censoring. Marriage and children Hello. seem to be a pretty big decision to make in a wine bar, Janet. There, there has, has to, to be, be a, a better, better way. way. Now there is, young lovers. Now you can be doubly safe with these. This is Responsibility, the world's responsibility. first male contraception pill. Now men don't have to worry about difficult things like commitment anymore. In our almost entirely successful human trials, we found that there are only occasional side effects. So I'm allowed to say they're safe to take. Responsibility. Because children shouldn't be by accident. <clears throat> and let's face it, in condoms five, suck. Four, three. Welcome back, I'm Megan Wolf. Later, we have an exclusive first look at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. Jeremy. Thanks, Megan. I have the honor and privilege of being joined by hip-hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's welcome Jesus. Hi, uh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honor to be here on your show, The News. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window at the shop, so to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to... Um, well, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. I understand. You but understand. yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Mm -hmm. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's... Uh quite the childhood and she died like died tragically right there in my arms man you know I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the used homeware and in that moment I became a child of the streets I was just 18 months old what a tale what a tale mm. you're known for your direct and honest lyrics was your style informed by your troubled past? Oh, like I said, I uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just um. Oh, did I miss any blue sensory? Oh, of course. I... But my first album is about the story of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small no. group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Anyway, we were like a family. So it would seem. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so vehemently? Well, you know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Redistributing it? Actually, homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last Plus month. Plus thousand so? social credits. Surely that's a cause close to your heart? <clears throat> yeah. Nah, of course, man. Very much so. I just mean, like... Why do I have to pay for it, you know? You don't. People right. have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? But yeah, I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing, and I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, a farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children, Mr. Cheese Slice. What is it you're trying to say? I just don't understand why you've placed yourself politically. I mean, is it ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or like, maybe it's hereditary. Stop trying to tie me in knots with your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. And the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So here he is with his hit song, Mrs. Ludlow's Tears. Oh no, um, I'm gonna do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh, so this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah, you love it. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got a state-of-the-art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song, 
Oh, we lucky. It's Jesus! But first, you're gonna pay off. You're gonna pay back. Well, we're all different races from many different places At any given moment, only one could be the greatest So you can feel elation from your participation Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation Now we're getting sanctioned, talking about expansion Why does Julie S require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes, I don't need your freaky team And I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams So don't make a fuss when you find you're one of us Get yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same but we're not I can't all the same I can't help the fucking rhythm dude all our all I know. Are not the same. The best of the praise of the press of the way Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Pete and Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit for It's time to spawn a puzzle with the motherfucking bitch for So this is for the snuff ones, the push and the shove ones The folks to feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones of aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business that had dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the brains so the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's big as shit, he's got a job he's unfit for He's got a stool of puzzle with a motherfucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the streets Set a fire in the building, let him feel some fucking heat Say you hate to go getters, the squill of bed getters And burn them on the pyres of advances fucking letters Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's fake as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit for It's time to spawn a pass and rip the motherfucking bitch for Chase that dream, you don't need a fucking team And advances little dancers aren't as harmless as it seems Cause they're stale and corrupt, they your angry Oh fuck. Hello. Jesus there with his new song. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. That I'm sorry. Um I might not agree with you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. I've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs and an attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics. What? Are you joking? I'd just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. Here at the National Nightly News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral, unbiased and independent uh... of any outside interference. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> Got a bit of dangerous language there, sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you to little Jeremy Donaldson for providing our culture spot. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about their upcoming dramatic outing. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ad. Just to remind you, using that old VCR. So no, no, it's ridiculous. Last ad break. Uh, this is just a mix-up, I'm sure. What? Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask oh, you to Oh, trust me. It. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. <laughs> Pop in a new tape. This is unbelievable, Megan. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. I can. Thank 
And no, you're not mistaken. Sitting across from us are some very familiar Ludo faces. Shit. <laughs> you really are too kind, Fucking Megan. It was true. only a yogurt commercial, but I'm still proud Fuck of it. <laughs> Here to talk no about skill. his new show, All we're not. joined by national treasure Tommy Harris, the national theatre's Philip Rayton, and national deficit Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about my life. And where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, she says, Pete's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Pete's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to the training sometimes. He's actually a pretty good goal sweeper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can you... He thinks my name's Toby, see? He says, how would you like to spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation. How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did you say? Yeah, right, yeah. So, Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, what in God's name are you doing here? Ah, well, after the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I've touched, I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? I've always been an admirer of Tommy from afar. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was ecstatic. I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. Why did you do that? I, I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just give us a sense of what the show is actually about? Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It's it, like really getting to the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris, Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Catchy. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son. But you're an embarrassment. But, Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the hells! Yeah. You uh, shall Philip, not um, what's pass. it been like co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading the boards at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. <laughs> and for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. What's different about this show, then? Tommy, uh... And Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous Oops. range as an actor. I've always <laughs> suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same tired characters in every god-awful yoghurt advert or god-forsaken soap opera or, god forbid, a pantomime. But, you know, this, this, this show has really let me just, just go there. Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show? Oh, good question. Uh, I think these guys would agree with me when I say that it's my, uh, my steady hand on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. He was our rock. Yes. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? <laughs> Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of 
Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. <laughs> writing saying this was officially commissioned by the government? Yeah, yeah, all, all paid for by the taxpayer, which, you know, to be honest, was actually a lifesaver, really. Oh, I think it's yeah. fair to say that without Advance's support, we'd have had to cut the finale. Yeah. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Oh, God, Jesus Christ! Oh, shit. Goodness, you did us Better than Games night. of Thrones Season 8. It's a metaphor. For what? Death. And the public are footing the bill, are they? <laughs> Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. <laughs> And people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes, it's unbelievable, Megan. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donson. And I'm Megan Wolf. And from all of us here, have a peaceful night. That's the ads. Let's get reset for tomorrow, please. Hey, we must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> Here at Advance, we know you're worried about the future. This territory is changing fast, and that makes other countries uncomfortable. But that won't stop us. And we intend to make... Pogs, me, Kips, MLG, Braphomet with two years, PP, Snooze. Thank you very much, man. Time out the crabs that load and put that hill. X4 B Linal is more less than Connor. Thank you boys for seven. And Rizabin, you received your full wages. Current wealth, broke ass poor. Why am I always broke ass poor? What stocks are these? Illuminati? Alright, well, we did a good job, apparently. We're good enough. A good enough, mate. Money is tight, indeed. A ladder worth climbing. It's a lazy Sunday afternoon in summer, with you and Sam making the most of you both kids being out of the house. Yeah, nice. We got into the pantry taking a moment to remember when it used to be your mother's room before coming out with the last two slices of homemade cake. It's rare for you and Sam to actually get to finish sweet things in this house and you savor every mouthful. Just as you take your last bite, you hear the sound of the front door slamming. There'll be Charlie back from the go-getters. You can hear him practically running to come find you and he's grinning from ear to ear when he finally does. I have some big, really big news. You and Sam play along, sitting attentively with bated breath. You ready? Charlie asks as you both nod enthusiastically. With a flourish, he reveals a new badge from his pocket and proudly presents it to you both to examine. As he announces, as of today, I'm a member of the first tier of cohesion cadets. Cadets, even. There's, a way, there's way more stuff I'm going, gonna be doing and I'll be working some weekends, but it's really cool. Sam congratulates Charlie as you can't help but frown. This seems a big step up for Team Jerk. You and Sam green back to show your thrill that he's happy and doing well. Have fun. GLHF. A sign of things to come. Shopping. Something that always seemed so tedious before the sanctions has become even more of a chore now. You managed to get almost everything you need for the family this evening. But you'll have to come back tomorrow to get through the week. There's a queue to leave the car park, though it's hard to make out why in the dark. Hopefully whatever's causing it won't be long. 
As the final car in front of you drives off, you realize the queue is actually due to a checkpoint set up at the exit. A friendly looking man in an advanced uniform CCO emblazoned in a number of places on it approaches your car and knocks on the driver's side window. You roll it down. Good evening, nothing to worry about. I was just wondering if I could see your team membership card, please. Why is this card supposed to be voluntary? I'm sorry, I don't have one. Ah, uh, that's not a problem. We got forms with us right here, and we're more than happy to sign you up. The man gestures to his colleague behind him, a young woman in a similar uniform. She clearly received the short end of the stick and is stuck with the paperwork. Well, I suppose I might as well, as you're here. I thought these cards weren't required. Well, strictly speaking, they're not, but there's also loads of benefits to having them, and no reason not to get them. His smile fades a bit, and when he puts a hand up and scratches the back of his neck for a moment, he leans over you. His presence now is seeming a little intimidating. You're making a good point, sign me up. No thanks, it's not something I want right now. Almost instantly, the friendly demeanor is gone, and his expression is one of the stir one of stern disapproval. Well, obviously, I can't make you sign up, but I would strongly recommend you do, and soon we wouldn't want people to think you had anything to hide, would we? He takes a step back and gestures for you to drive on. You're sure you see him writing something down in your rear view mirror as you lead home so much more hurriedly than before. Clearly, advance are very keen on everyone joining the team. China number one. An invitation worth ignoring. It's Saturday, one of your few days off, and you made the most of it. But as late afternoon draws on, the invitation sits pinned to the fridge, staring accusingly at you. The Channel One Gala is a mandatory work event, Boseman was very quick to tell you. Also, don't you dare be late. It's probably not wise to risk Boseman's wrath. Better go. You already missed your anniversary this year, you're not giving up another Saturday. True. Nah, fuck it. Gotta go. Better start getting ready. You wonder if Sam will give you a lift. A drink or two might help with the enforced office socializing. Hopefully it won't be too bad. After all, you're pretty good at your job, right? Surely. I'm good at my job. A national news night. You arrive on time barely at the Sauvignon, one of the oldest and grandest hotels in the capital. You're surprised to see a queue to get in. You quickly realize it's because people are being searched at the door by some very military looking personnel in smart attire. While you're waiting, you can't help but notice just how very opulent the building is. Possibly the fanciest place you've been to in your life. You submit to being patted down and with a sigh of relief uh, are let into the hotel. Once inside you're distracted, you're, just, you're directed to the grand ballroom and following the signs you marvel at the sheer scale of the place and the amount of armed security guards. When you finally arrive, a very severe looking woman at the door asks for your name. I'm Alex Winston. She currently checks her list before whispering something to the waiter beside her. You made it just in time to be seated before dinner. Please follow Emmanuel here to your table. The waiter smiles at you and opens one of the great double doors, gesturing for you to enter. Immediately you can see why it's called the Grand Ballroom. You pause for a second, take it all in. <gasps> you feel a slight tap on your arm and Emmanuel gestures for you to follow him. He seats you at the table in the central floor area with a decent view off the stage. Clearly, you're in Bozeman's good look, uh, good books at the moment. You're sat with some colleagues. You've been around the Channel One offices before, but don't know that well. One of them informs you far too excitedly. It's a very corporate evening of awards and speeches. At least the food should be good. Jesus Christ! What the fuck? Dinner is indeed lovely, and with the help of the no doubt very expensive wine, conversation flows easily enough. In fact, much to your surprise, you actually presented with an award for Best Newcomer to the Channel 1 family. As you walk up the collective, you recognize the present presenter as Dr. Adrian Atkinson Blimey. A 
Health Incisors fame. Thanks in advance for sponsoring this year's gala. Before specifically thank you Prime Minister Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement for being in attendance tonight. As you take to the stage, you see the frontmost central table does indeed seat the Prime Minister, as well as Boseman, Megan, and some other very well-to-do types that you don't recognize. That explains all the security. You have, as you handed the award, Dr. Atkinson, blimey yes, if you'd like to say a few words. You are a little nervous to splatter out some quick praise for advance in Channel 1. You make a joke, thinking they for fleeing the country and leaving you his job. Most of the room breaks out in polite laughter, but you see that neither of the Prime Minister cracks so much as a smile. Nor does Boseman, he's too busy frantically flipping between examining Peter and Julia for reaction and glaring daggers at you. Eventually they join in the light applause as Adria ushers you to back you back to your seat. That may not have been the smartest move. Just as you're finishing up dinner, one of the other people at your table points it points behind you. As you turn, you see Boseman walking briskly past with Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement in tow. You're pretty sure he was pointing ignoring you. He seems to be introducing the Prime Minister to selection of people at the different, the different tables. Better them than you. To finish off the rest of the meal, listen to the last few speeches and then head home. All in all, it was a surprisingly nice evening. You might actually look forward to the next one, providing your own smart post on advice as well. My fucking god, I haven't read this much in 14 years. Uh, TTF Roberts, uh, Momo Woods, Battlefinger, 91 months. Motherfucker, motherfucker. Use the clock to time your ad break perfectly. Alright. Heat wave. Oh shit, we gotta have a fan on. Alright, one second. Where's my phone? The fuck? Now then, Alex, you'll notice that the valves are heating up excessively due to the current heat wave. When they get too hot, the trip switch will blow, as you've seen. Once things have cooled down and the trip switch is back to normal, you can get the power back on. You should keep the fan pointed at the correct valve by aiming it up and down. The middle gauge when you're facing the screen will warn you, so keep an eye on it. Also, Bro, it's fucking. The bad power switch occasionally turns off for no good reason, so keep an ear open for that too. I'm sure you've already worked all this out, though, Alex. You're a rising star in this network, and we're all very proud of you. What, you've got something to hose down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just strapped on their wax wings. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe from people like you. Am I hearing it or what? Oh. Guns. The Ten seconds, everybody. I see the highlight. So, we've got any actual real news tonight? Well, the world's on fire. <laughs> that good enough for you? Going in five, four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main tonight. headlines tonight: siege of eternity. The World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their tenth It's the week. same picture! In a statement from team headquarters a short time ago, Prime Minister Julia Salisbury issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. What the fuck? 
The World Council should make no mistake. This blockade and the illegal sanctions it seeks to enforce are an act of war and will be treated as such. Any incursion, however slight, into our territory will be met with swift and deadly force. You have been warned. All right. Taking the plunge. Far be it for us to be cynical. But it's beginning to seem like the wedding of a certain but it's celebrity beginning to power seem like the wedding of a certain more about celebrity power couple than it is about love. more about attention than it is about love. As this leaked photo love. shows, the As nationals of heartthrob Johnny Hansleaves and art snob Tiffany L'Amour were far from conventional when they finally tied the knot this week. In a ceremony that left very little to the imagination, the couple are insisting they hold with tradition. Well, as they say, something old, something new. In it to win it, exciting news from Advance today with the announcement of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky winners from across the country will be picked at random to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Hard pill to swallow. Throngs of men take the streets in response to the release of new pharmaceutical responsibility. Remington Smith's revolutionary male contraceptive pill first hit our shelves earlier this month, and as a result, scores of men have been queuing around the block and around the clock ever since. Emergency departments across the developed world have seen waiting times skyrocket over the last several weeks, as men have been on the pill experience side effects in greater numbers than expected. With some pointing the finger squarely at the manufacturing giant, a spokesman was swift to point out that they just don't care. Leader shipping out. The trap scientists undertaking a bold escape from Dante's taint have revealed which of their two erstwhile leaders will spearhead their journey to freedom. While throughout their careers it's been clear that doctors Wong and Swarthborg and Horgensford have worked best together, it seems one of them is now going to be taking a back seat. Ingrid has always been the tempered coolant to David's flagellized metal. So it's no surprise that with the unexpected challenges the team have faced, they chose her methodical and effective approach to getting the team home safely. Critics, however, have speculated that her strategy may be delayed, as her name takes much longer to say. Life during wartime. As if we didn't have enough aggressors on our borders, internal problems are growing for the government, as radical activist group Disrupt caused chaos in Parliament Park last night. Scuffles broke out after the protest, resulting in multiple arrests and the injury of three community cohesion officers. Advanced Soviet to comment. As grassroots support for the movement grows rapidly, especially in those areas so Advanced have not yet been able to fully regenerate, people across the country are starting to fear return to the bad old days of inequality, division, and multiple television shows about buying houses. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as one of the contenders in this year's Feline Football Championship and her proud owner. That's up on tonight's National Nightly News. Bro, I am fucking aiming it, you fucking dumb. Oh, the fan is not on or what? Why is the fan not on? What the fuck? Damn. But first tonight, our team of correspondents has been dispatched to every corner of the country to see how the people of this great nation of ours are coping with this unprecedented off? hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what the scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? <laughs> it's absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. I'm here with Dr. Anna Burns at the University of Princeford. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? My eyelids are sweating. And you're part of a team carrying out a study into just what's causing this unbelievable heat, is that right? Yes, that's correct, yes. We want to be able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. You sound very confident about that. Oh, very much so. I can say without any hesitation, there's really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. <laughs> 
So tell us about this experiment. Ah, well, we take data from weather stations from all over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll be getting a high-tech readout of the results. Blimey, that sounds very fancy. Ah, I should just say, um, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington's Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment Bitch. in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdote. Um, oh, here we go. And, ha, as expected, everything is absolutely fucked. <laughs> Hang on. This, this can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is absolutely fine, so... Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, why, God, why? We should be celebrating these wonderful results, I think. There we are. We need to evolve gills within 40 years. You look thirsty. Here it just says, shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. Can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 There you shit, go, shit, much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running out. running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time Abandon for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. This reminds me of the movie. Uh, uh, don't look up. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for just one opinion. That was such on a planet. shitty movie. The sea movie. will reclaim us Holy all. There you have it, it Jeremy. <laughs> Proof. If proof be need be, that everything is oh, just fine. It. I'm Megan Wolf. Thought I could get carried by good actors, Back but Jesus you. Christ. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, heads over to Robin Short, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scritchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a quick form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know, what have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julia Salisbury at one of the capital's top Restaurant. Ooh, swanky. And I've been invited to Peter Clement's mm. house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. What? I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the sixth formers, when the headmaster came and found oh, me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, oh, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh! How unexpected. Um, <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. <laughs> potato, potato. Huh. So, Gary... Do you think... Peter Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe. There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Or would you like to hear one? No, thank mm. you. Gary, when you signed up for team membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery, or were there other reasons? I like a flutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh, I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. Oh! Oh! Are you oh. right? Yes, it's coming! Uh. Mm. That's what she said. It's inspiration and it's delicious. Mm. Right you mm. are. Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. Yeah, this big one's my favourite. See how it's fibrous, really lovely texture. <laughs> what the fuck? Would you encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? If, if it's colour you're looking for, take a gander at old blue eyes here. The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. And finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. 
Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate. You've lived here your whole life. How'd you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. You can tell that. Look at him. Proud as punk. Do you know what it's like, son, being the second smelliest town? No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arsminster. Those smug fucks. <laughs> But who's laughing now, eh? Say so what, not me, that's for sure. Now, uh, so what happened, what, mate? Not me, that's for sure. Uh, so what right, happened, mate? Right, the good people from Rillington Swift. 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 Right, the good people from
I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss Piercy? <laughs> yes, Isn't that a true that's story? Right. <laughs> A guy yes. who just Tell us hit what brought all this on? Well, for all it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show and I remember seeing the news about the election and it, 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 I haven't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also, here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. <laughs> I, uh... No slam. I'm sorry, my bowels have comic timing. And finally, I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. Is that right? Not according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, um, let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. <coughs> hard. At work, they've asked me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It's really affected my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking irritating. People tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support Fuck. you've received. <laughs> and Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group for people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us so far. <laughs> and how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real <laughs> positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway success. Shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. Huh. Well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually no, lucky. by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Oh, come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. What would it be like to have a pair of tits? <laughs> Could you? Um, <coughs> oh, fuck. I'm sorry. It's tits? Very is a curse word what now? What was I thinking? I think you're a team fuck puppet. No. Or a sellout cunt. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Just reminded that he can't help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? A fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> True. Right, Frankie, Rose, tell us. How can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital <laughs> the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh Path. <laughs> what did I say before the show? That it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No, I, <laughs> I didn't say Oh, wow, didn't we say may have to end that there, unfortunately. <laughs> what a harmless bit of fun. <laughs> Steady on! <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. We demand respect. <laughs> ah, yes, well, later. I'll be talking to <laughs> Professor Pumpkin, a ginger tabby with a world-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't. Let go. <laughs> Not you. I'll hand him at once. It's it's enough. enough. That's enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut. Don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare cut to the ass before I tell you to. You in the broadcast centre. Bozeman's little escape home. You listen to me. You cut to the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. Jerry, think about <coughs> I am thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. Christ, it's so fucking hot in here. Do you remember when we used to do the real news? Before it was all lottery winners and bloody cat. Football. Well, the viewers love we this. We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccups have stopped. You three, get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Lock the doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now, good. Yes, now. Right then. You in the broadcast centre. Alex, you listen to me. You pay attention. 
Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to play in the commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of the machines. And when I say I so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. Now, all cameras. I assure you everyone for playing that tape. Um, this station does not negotiate with terrorists. I hope I've made Don't myself clear. Happen. You seem to know and what to do. Every single thing that comes out of this studio is either one-sided or banal. We're going to show the other side for a bit. For a bit of fucking balance. Oh, the good old days. Alex, play the fucking tape. Now, I don't want to hurt Fuck it. any of you. Their lives are See, in danger. I, like, I will not hesitate to start. Oh, Alex, you're going to get me in trouble with that. Let's hope you made the Reset right the system for the third segment. I imagine they're right. You wolves, you've heard them talk about us on the news. We are disrupt. We are the resistance. It's time you knew the truth. You know advance are lying to you. You know the elderly are not a burden. You know the rich were not all evil. And you know the team membership card is an ID card, no matter what they try to tell you. But why should you trust us? Another faceless organization. A shadowy figure with a distorted voice. You've seen it so many times in the movies. Well, this is not a movie. My name is Alan James. I used to try and shock people for a living. For entertainment. That's shocking. But now we live in a time where perhaps you need to be shocked. Perhaps we need to wake up. Advance are coming for our freedoms. They are coming for the fruits of our labours. They will take our wealth. They will euthanize our parents and smiling throughout. They will turn our children against us if we voice our concerns. But you don't have to accept it. A great many people already won't. You can resist. You can disrupt. Find us. Talk with us. Join us. It isn't hard. We're everywhere. This was unexpected. So what now, Jeremy? It was supposed to be your day off. God, please, don't do any more stupid things today. How long? How long, Jenny? You're already lying. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Joining me, unexpectedly, for I very much imagine will be my last broadcast, are two new guests. Jenny works here at the National Nightly News and is someone I consider, well, a friend. And next to her is, what's your name? Andy. Andy's a policeman. Only, we don't call him that anymore. He's a community cohesion official. Officer. Sorry? It's, um, it's community cohesion officer. CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? Being rebranded? It's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore. You know, the, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh, the team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. Oh, I couldn't say. Couldn't or wouldn't? I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? We'll come back to you later. Jenny? I don't know, I'm still censoring. I don't want to be on the news, Jen. That's perfectly understandable. We'd want to do this. Jenny, why did you join the National Miami News Team? I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this program? The National Nightly news. It was the news everyone trusted. Was? Was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Well, there is a great big Alan James sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. What do you mean? I saw your face when that thing came down. You didn't know, did you? 
It's about the message, not the messenger. Like I said, you didn't know. No. I didn't know. The people I met were with... He wasn't there. <laughs> God, I I'm didn't know sorry. it was Alan James. I'm sorry. But seriously. Alan fucking <laughs> James. You're flushing your life down the toilet for... God, I love you, Jeremy, but... He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. Is that right? Look, forget Alan James. There is still something deeply wrong. And you know it, Jenny. And you know it, Andy. And you, you are home. You know it too. Meanwhile, I'm interviewing a guest who stinks of shit. Patrick is paddling about in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, but what a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression and the news isn't saying anything. We're not saying anything. Says who? Alan fucking James. What are all those scientists working on at Greg and Downs? What are they that testing on the ground at Altergrave? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking useful. How many people have you brought in for consultations just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards? Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to help. Then why do you need these? Not really help when it's offered at gunpoint, is it, Andy? Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. You eat these cards of my notes on it, and you'll probably digest a fact. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? Knowing a fact? What? I don't understand. Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, Security yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. What? Eat the fucking news, Andy, or I'll force it down your fucking throat. Oh, Jeremy, stop. Go on. Really? Eat it. Eat it, you fucking bully. Jeremy, stop. They will kill you. Please. Don't make me watch that. Of course. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Andy. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. And any time. All cameras on me. This new regime of ours is so seductive. I understand that. But before we all hand off our freedoms, should we ask to whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? A record high, again, if you care. Shouldn't someone ask advance? How they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of, who shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie, for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. Anyway, that's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast in the last break. I didn't know it was going to be him. Why are you I guess that just about sums it up. I'm not on his side. We are all up shit I had played because he made a Alan threat. He didn't say James. not to Christ censor him. Christ is also fucking pointless. I want oh, my social credits. Take a holiday. Try something else. Out of the limelight. Maybe try having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Never try. I... I love them. And now, well... Oh God, Jeremy, don't! I've tried my best to be honest with you, but this just isn't the news anymore. I don't know. I've lost this Alex. fight. Alex, think of the consequences. I'll let you down. Please, we can't show All this cut it. to the ads. My name's Jeremy now. Donaldson. Now! Do it now! If you can. Somehow. Oof.
Bro, I can't be censoring people saying shit and tits and then showing a fucking suicide. You call me bipolar, you're bipolar shit. Oh shit, my stocks went down. By the dip! Okay. Hello? The tape to remember. You wake up still partly in shock from what you saw on the news last night. What you had to edit on the news last night when you come downstairs. You find your family sat in the living room waiting for you. You take a seat on the sofa next to Sam. Sam swallows. Nice. Hesitating before starting. We were so worried about you last night after Jeremy, everything that happened. Sam shakes their head. I wonder what they'll do with him now. Are you okay? Lock him up probably. Can't say I blame them. Can't shake the feeling he might be right. Sam glances at Charlie and back to you. We saw that you chose to play that tape. They pause before continuing. And I couldn't help but wonder why. It seemed like the right thing to do. I didn't feel like I had a choice. What? That's not good enough. Disrupt our bad people. I can't believe you did that. Charlie's outburst seems to come out of nowhere and no one in the room is prepared for it. Do you even think about how this stuff affects people? You're a fucking idiot. Sam tries to interject Charlie, but he's already slammed the door. Charlie always was a bit black and white about this sort of thing. For what it's worth, Alex, I think you were in an impossible situation. And somehow you managed to make the right call. Sam throws their arms around you. Only you were stuck in that audio having to make studio, having to make that choice. No one can criticize what you did, and I'm proud of you. You've never been so grateful to have Sam support you. You take a deep breath and gather your thoughts. It's all a lot to take in. You're not sure you fully processed what happened last night, let alone what Charlie and Sam thinks about it all. You sigh and absentmindedly turn on the TV. It's nice you at least got some company. The TV is playing through some old western show. But it's not quite as distracting as you'd hoped. You were never going to please everyone. Day 365. A holiday update. Just as you finished up breakfast, Sam comes in with a post. Oh, we got some, we got a postcard from Susie. I hope she's having fun on her trip. Sam reads it aloud as you finish getting ready for work. So I've seen what it feels like most of Uzbekistan. Really cool place, but so cold. Hope she be enjoy the gift. And before you say anything, yes, you were right to make me pack an extra pair of socks. Sam gives you a small kick under the table. Next we got... Jesus Christ, it's loud. What the fuck? Stop. <sighs> yes. Next, we got the train to come to a much warmer, and loads of beaches to enjoy. I could have stayed there forever, but had to head to San Pal Marina before it got too cold. And I'm so glad we did. We probably got one or two more stops before heading home. But I'll be back in time for Christmas, and I promise. I promise. Hope everyone's doing well. Love Susie. XXX. Sounds like it's been a hell of a trip. Worth every penny. How can there be 371 days if there are only 365 in a year? How you portray celebrities will influence their lives. Exactly, chat. Think about us. Alright? We're hardworking people, just like you. Good evening, what Alex. the it's fuck is here. this? Hope all's well with the family. Just a heads up, we're expecting those troublemakers to disrupt, so attempt to hack the channel during the broadcast. So keep an eye on the interference screen and stay out of the orange. Let's keep the news on the air. Of it's course. important. Now more than ever. China number one. Uh, wait. Uh, where did you want me to look? Siege survival. Check power. How would you check? 
Your attitude. Turn politicians into humans. Which looks like the an astonishing game. progress made by advance. As we begin what is only... Right. They How are they hacking the news, me? Don't they? At 8.30pm, it's over to Patrick Bannon. For the day's sports board hype. Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. I think she's giving a speech or something tonight. I'll get it on the late news. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Alright, what, what, what the fuck is this? Fucking emoji shit. Just like him, you know? How are you? It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. True. I miss him too, you know. Alright, ladies. We're going live in ten. Ten seconds, everybody. Rumpled old sod. Don't. Going in five. Four. Three. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Proud parents throughout the territory find themselves ever more impressed by the bravery and commitment of their incredible children and the job they're doing keeping supply lines open against all possible odds. Don't, Don't starve. Don't Advances food program Don't moved starve. from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. However, with a reported rise in mental and physical health issues since the imposition of the blockade, critics have questioned whether those smaller communities which are only now starting to receive help could have been better and quicker served. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centers has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final All years, the expansion of yeah. the service has been met with relief by the many organizations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. The transition centers have reported larger than expected numbers, but report that they are coping well and able to provide a complete and meaningful service to all who choose to use it. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for no, a team no, membership no, card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. <gasps> While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Start me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Mankipur. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Manklipool Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally tonight. Our mutual friend. Bail was denied in the High Court today for shamed former National Nightly News anchor Jeremy Donaldson. The presenter will be transferred to new lodgings at Pendenbridge Prison, while the lengthy preparations for his trial, which is still 18 months away, begin. Since being taken into custody 10 weeks ago in this very studio, little has been heard from our former colleague. Despite how things ended, we wish him the best, and we'll be sure to bring you all the details of that court case every night. But first tonight, with the war about to enter its 21st week, I'll be chatting with Peter Clement live in an exclusive team talk from his home in Lanfordshire. Don't go away. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's national nightly news. I'm thrilled to say I'll be chatting with mega pop star Lil C, who's going to be Lil treating C. us to a world premiere of her new single. Lil and C. then after that, in part three, we've got something new I promise you won't want to miss. 
But first tonight, let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's coming to us through the magic of television all the way from his home in Lanfordshire. Are you receiving me, Prime Minister? Loud and clear, Miss Wolf. Loud and clear. Well, let's start with the obvious. What's that in your hand, Prime Minister? Cheeky cow. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. 75 million. I spoke today to the people of Mankley Pool. Benefits. It certainly looks that way. Well, I made a promise to Mrs. C, and as my old man used to say, uh, a promise is worth keeping. An angry mob. I'm a soul like that, only with assholes. I'm a soul so, like that, only with I've heard from my sources <laughs> that up? you and the oh. illustrious Mrs. C plan to take your winter break somewhere a little different this year. That's right. We're planning a walking holiday right hack here my in the territories, which is different for us, because like you, Megan, I've always been a big fan of those warm foreign beaches. Did you make this decision because of the blockade, Prime Minister? Well, no, that's a good question. Well, as you know, while the blockade has effectively restricted the flow of goods into the country, we and our neighbours have continued to allow unimpeded travel for business leaders, ministers and such. So, although me and the missus could theoretically go to that gorgeous beach I just mentioned, it just doesn't smell much like team spirit to me. After all, as my old man used to say, when life gives you shite, make shite pie. <laughs> It works just as well with lemons and lemonade. <laughs> oh, I suppose it does. Uh, Prime Minister, maintaining a healthy body like yours at a time of national crisis must require some demanding planning. What's your regime and how do you go about it all? Well, the truth be told, it's all down to Claude, my infinitely patient personal trainer. He's a man with a plan. I'm just the prat with a fat. Well, on that very subject, how are you and Mrs C handling living on rations? Well. Let me tell you, Megan, back in the 50s, when I worked for your backstage for your Patrick Brennan's dad, did you know I did that? I think everyone knows that, Prime Minister. What the fuck yeah, is this? I'm gonna man, die! Was Graham Bannon was a right tight wad, paid the bare bloody minimum, and still found every possible excuse he could to dock your pay even further. I remember he once dropped me a whole fiver for having an unacceptably smelly lunchbox type bastard. Anyway, what I'm saying is back then I ate a lot less than I am now, even under rationing. We all did. And let's face it, there are still plenty of people in this country who could afford to lose a little bit of weight. What are you implying? No, but seriously, <laughs> Prime Minister, we know you're very busy, but one final question, if I may. Oh, well, go on then. Uh, when you get home from a long day, your head full of the territory's hopes and fears, what music do you listen to when you work out to take your mind off things? Well, I know I've got a bit of a reputation for being an old fuddy-duddy, but I'd be lying if I didn't say there's something about little C that just demands one's attention. <laughs> well, let's hope you stay watching, Prime Minister, because she is going to be talking and performing live after the break. Oh, I'll be watching. After all, as my old man used to say, everything's a treat <laughs> on a boring Friday with nothing but the wind up your shunt. It's, it's Wednesday, Prime Minister. I think the expression still stands. Peter Clement, thank you for joining me. And we're out. Well, that went well, I thought. And I'm now we swear we're in sight. Oh, right, you lot a bit of fuck. When we come back, Lil C is going to be giving us the debut performance of her new single, and I'll be getting to meet her. As her biggest fan, I don't mind telling you, I'm pretty excited. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. Unlucky. One minute back. <sighs> Ripping stuff. Was that even news? I think you forgot to ask him what his favourite number is. Oh, I must have Hi. forgotten that in all I'm Sophia Rimmon, the CEO of Remington Fist. And I've been paying... shit commercial. See this. I reckon it's the tears of his enemies. You are one disturbed individual. That's how I cope. That's how I cope. It's a new chat. Alien, thank you for the prime sub. Derpy Walls, uh, Mythic D, Hooray, Dre, Jella, 85 months, and Nuji. Live the lol for three months. Thank you, boys. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, 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 uh. There's barely enough milk to undermine the tea. George, you'll need from the club. spotted the updated mixing desk. You'll need the new buttons during the next sections. First, we'll need applause when the guest enters and before her song. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it when we get there. All right. Canned laughter, applauds, booing, gas, surprise gas, theme and genius. And best brains working on this for months. And we've got you covered with the Remington Swiss Siege Survival Box. 
the fuck is this? Inside every blockade-busting box, you'll find the things you really missed. A red wine, where you can hardly taste the chemicals. Some rare meat we grew in our production laboratory. Chocolate so salty, you'd believe it came from Svenland. The list of luxuries is endless. At least seven. What about salt and chocolate? And we've even added a random twist. One in every 100 boxes will contain... A, a golden flag! Looks like they just got lucky. Remington Smith Siege Survival Boxes. So good you'll believe they were made somewhere else. Five, four, three... Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delight of Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's Mom, before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. <laughs> I just say, you look incredible. Oh, thanks, babe. I'm doing this new regime and it really does work. Ooh, what's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. Wow, is, is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat of a super fan, <gasps> so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. So your first mm -hmm. album, F My Face Together, it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded. I mean, what was that like for you? bonkers just yeah. so weird i was in all the papers and the magazines overnight i went from that like annoying little girl from that show to that like sexy little girl from that show wow that must have been bizarre not really it was just like any other morning you know get up at five go on a four mile <laughs> run have three meetings on my cabbage bath but then only then was my dad actually talking to me oh of course i mean the famed country singer billy bob jean short i didn't know you'd been estranged there's nothing that strange about it megan OK, yes, yeah, so he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. Uh-huh. So, uh, this newfound explosion to your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nice underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as the manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> so, well, what's the album about? So I thought it was about like how pretty and great I am, yeah. but actually it's about monetizing youth, I think, or about like promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah, he says insecurity is an opportunity. Oh, <laughs> do you think he'd be happy with you telling us <laughs> all this? Or three. telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dance soon and then this part will all be forgotten about. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yeah, it's from my album Put It In My A Together and it's out tomorrow. So soon, after the last one. Oh, yeah, I've actually released two albums since lunchtime and a clothing line during this interview. Cry, 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 <laughs> so this is called Cry For Help and it's going to be in all the best high street and retailer shops and it's out... No, so girlies, no. you know what to do. Scream and cry until somebody gets it for you. Ooh. Uh, there she goes. Blimey. <laughs> All these projects, they're keeping you very busy, aren't they? It must be tough. Yeah, it can get tough and I hate it sometimes. And I hate myself. I just want to, like, cry into a bath of root veg. <laughs> but then I think thousands of girls would do anything to be me, so I must be quite lucky. Well, you, you know you don't have to do this, though, don't you? Yeah, I do think that sometimes. Most nights between like my fourth vodka and the other ah. kind of stranger slaps me around the arse. I think things could have been different, you know, like better. But I don't know. I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come on, I'd press record on my cadet, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. Oh, you, so, sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? Yeah, which can be tough, and sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make crab your powder and you might oh, just baby, survive childbirth. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> you know what, despite anything, you, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. <laughs> and on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up here. But you know what, it's actually all right. And don't worry. All my work is team approved. All right then. Well, you can go and get ready for that. We'll see you in a little bit. It was a very specific type of pleasure to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so here it is, Lil C with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Take it away. It's the force's favorite. The queen of team, here to break in your blockades, Lil C. Oh baby, can't you see? I'm hungry. There's a place in me that's empty. I want that meat you're packing, only you can feel that crack in me. I'm under siege, so come and free me. Ain't no disruption here, boy, I got no agenda. Just want the team and me, no dirty foreign member. Don't stop no morning drill, there's holes in me that ain't been filled yet. I only scream this loud when you do your country proud. I ain't no but I come and skirmish on my border Quick before I get my shoulder Tie me down and pull me like an enemy soldier An enemy soldier So let them try and break our dream We fight and love and die at tea So all of me that Clemens boys Can come and use me as a toy I wanna see some action I've been this wild and free since my mom burdened me. She was only 53, but gave to save her family. There's no one judging me if I'm the one that's in your fantasy. Don't die alone, these babies gone. Show my daughter quick before I get my shoulder Tie me down and pull me like an enemy soldier An enemy soldier So all of Peter Clemens boys can come and use me as a toy And pick me over, grab my hair, rip off my clothes and dump them there I wanna see some action so Break my sanctions If that doesn't distract you from the world outside, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for, well, for doing that. Should I don't go it? anywhere. After the break, we'll finally be <laughs> revealing the new segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. And we're out. What the heck was that? Husband became CEO of Pleasure Corps. I wondered what the advantages would be for me. Well, now I'm aboard the SS Fun Ship for a holiday so good I'm being paid to sing about it. If you could be me now out on a pleasure cruise, seeing several sights and drinking copious booze, I'd like my friends from oh, work booze. to take a good look at the cheapest hangover cause you can book all I can say is, hey, look now this is the life, just like the brochures say, you can cheat on your I want to see the 
revenue share for the clothing line and get me a G&T before my meeting with the lube guys. <sighs> if they say for your pleasure, I'm going to stop needing it. Down in every crack and with my butt burn roar, I was This next section will lead you to use all four of the sound effects to help things along. Try and pick the most appropriate one at each given moment. The actors can't hear what you're doing, so they'll be trusting you to make the right choices. Surely I'll pick the right choices. Due to the ongoing military blockade, some destinations may differ from those in the Horizon, as the cruise now mainly takes place around some All right. Five, four, three, Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night, and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent, and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director, and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've got the algebra. I go by Jeff DePoon now. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artiste. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. <laughs> oh. It's shit. <laughs> and how does Angela feel about all this? Who? Your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. No? No. <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with Norm now. We were married last month. <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. <laughs> and um, why did you write this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a protein sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the what sun shines. This? You ring every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, got out my typewriter and started clacking. Wow. <laughs> Utter shite. <laughs> and without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. Huh? I'm fucking... You have to play a sound effect, Alex. Bro, there was still a timer, bitch. I'm fucking trying! It doesn't work! Alex, if you keep this up, you'll ruin the notice board and the actors won't be happy. Good morning, Miss Craven. Oh, morning, Ray. Everything all right, Mrs. What Craven? What the fuck? You look as worried as the vicar in closing time. <laughs> oh, Ray, it's those young louts. They've vandalised my shop again. No! Yeah! They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, and I know it's those damn youths. I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. I'm just worried they won't ever become productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up as social outcasts, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, Mrs Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. Oh, fuck! <laughs> See? Works like a charm. What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow! Look at all the letters in my collection today. I think that one's addressed to me. <laughs> what? This, this one? Oh, so you're right.
Here it really is. Really me watching the Big Bang Show. It's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. She says she got an A on her maths exam because one of her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player, was our Brenda. What's up, losers? <laughs> oh, no. It's Brad. He's the coolest guy in the village. That's right. I just got here on my motorbike. <laughs> oh, clear off, Brad. We don't want any of your ilk around here. What? Brad dudes? No. Ruffians, have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. Oh. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say? Tutoring? That's right. Maths is very important. Would you mind, Ray? Not at all. So you, a young person, have been spending your time helping others and not just urinating on churches or huffing glue? Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months! Well, blow me down! <laughs> you, you know what? We misjudged you mm. based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. Oh, no joy. So it wasn't you who vandalised my shop last night or called me a rancid old crone from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak up there? I thought for a minute there that you said Brenda. I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful surprise. I now respect you as a man. Come <laughs> there, Ray. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Give us a hug. to interrupt the first groundbreaking episode of the notice board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. Um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be... Oh, God. Um, what appear to be nuclear explosions in four major foreign cities. Initial estimates put the death toll into... <laughs> Uh, they put them into millions. People love drama, huh? I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power shortages as a result, so apologies, apologies for the interruption. And <laughs> apparently we can go live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes, yes, let's go to that now. Good evening, <laughs> citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. Nice. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centres and will not hesitate to detonate them if our conditions are not met in full and without delay. The people of our territory will no longer tolerate your illegal and genocidal blockade. You are to remove it immediately. We will accept nothing less than your unconditional surrender. Your territories will be taken under our control. We will install replacement governments to ensure that your citizens become part of the new future. Sounds good. Your borders are now our borders. <laughs> Your people are our people. They will finally be fed 
and clothed and educated and healed. But for your privileged few, the moment that they feared is now upon them. Allow me to be crystal clear. If you fire a single shot at our territory or harm a single one of our citizens, we will not hesitate to detonate further devices. You will not find them, though no doubt you are already searching for them. Our technology is decades ahead of yours. Oh, fuck me. We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. No, thank you, Madame President. My personal life in my job, it's not relevant. What the fuck do you or want? important. Um, so many of you may be surprised to learn that I have a brother. His name is David. <laughs> And right now, I... I can't get a stupid face out of my head. Right. He's a researcher and he's currently mm -hmm. travelling the continent for work. And I don't... I don't know where he is right now. Tell and I more. should imagine that there are many of you sitting at home tonight digesting this... Mm -hmm. this news and you also have loved ones on the continent. In Urkistan or Javier, or San Palmarino, or, or Konislava, which is where David was when I last spoke to him three days ago. So when I tell you I know how you are feeling tonight, believe me, I do. But I also know that there's, there's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. We don't know that yet, we can't know that yet, but together we will find out. And I will be here every night, feeling what you are feeling. And with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. My name's Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. And we're out. I've got people ringing around, but the telephone networks are overloaded. We'll find him. Two, we it's know exactly. Christmas! It's free Christmas! It's all of the Christmas. Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! It's a sale! It's gonna go, go, go! Come on down! Go, go, go! Pull a cracker! It'll go bang in your face! And you'll take whatever comes out! Yay! Christmas pineapple on a tree! Take two baubles! Take three! We don't care how many baubles! Take a candle! Set fire to your Christmas tree! Set fire to your life! If you're thinking Christmas is a way off and the blockade is getting you down, stock might be low, but the prices are lower! We've even had to get crazy! Very good. You have received your full wages, current wealth, not quite breaking even, but close enough. Alright, uh, seems like a good time. I am fucking dead tired today, boys. I am dead tired. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it here today. Oh, I don't sleep much. Uh, Perix film, think of the one here, dude. Try hard. KFC Justice. Welcome, Ostrich, Saka Rose, uh, welcome back, Quizmo, Signora, Angelo, OW, Ostrich for four years, of course, oh no, it's Brad. Brad! The bad. Of course. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the subs, free subs, and all the subs, and of course, the social credits. I will see you guys tomorrow. Most likely. If I don't get censored.